Look, man, there's certain things that I would read, but I, I promise you, man, at this point in my life, I just process information and data, and I do my own analysis based on experiences and so on and so forth, and I can pick the truth. It's called qualitative and quantitative. Boom. Once you get those two, man, you form your own, yeah, yeah you your own truth, your own, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, these the people to be reading books, Yo, I, there was a dude named Dr. Ben. Uh, he wrote a lot of books, black Afrocentric. He claimed he was a part Ethiopian Jew and all that. I mean, he wrote some good stuff. I, I read it. Yeah. Turns out he wasn't any of the things he said he was. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that it, the books was full of lies. But he was a fraud, though. And so anytime you reference him, even when he gave you the truth, he sabotaged it because he was a fraud, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people would pull that yeah. out, man. Yeah. You know, like, I thought he was the man, man. Look, his books were so deep. Because, you know, at my age, man, you go through all these different phases, man, and you, you start searching and looking. And, and Dr. Ben, man, he died. He was destitute when he died, man. Well, that's, well, uh, and we'll talk about this on camera. That's, that's my take on Dr. Sebi. Oh, bro, come on, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's, 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 that's my take on Sebi. Yo, look, yeah, yeah. Sebi, you know, I went to Sebi's spot in L.A. Nobody was there. You try to order stuff from him, it's overpriced. I, I, you know, but, you know, we got this thing, right? I call it a, a fixation with, with messianic figures. Like, yeah, and the only thing messianic that. about them is that they died. That's it. They die tragically. So as yeah. soon as they die, they get put on a pedestal. They somebody important. They didn't do nothing. Nah. But they got killed, which is tragic. But you can't base your heroes on the fact that they just got a propensity to find trauma and misfortune. And that's what we do. As soon as, them, as, soon as they die, man, yeah. they become a, a main figure in our community. And, and, and I think it's the whole Jesus thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we, we, we tied into a that. A savior. We, we, we and, long for a savior. And not only that, we don't want nobody to say nothing bad about us when we die. So we make up all these things about this person. You know, George Wallace, he said some funny shit one time, right? He said... Yeah, he did, right? He, yeah, yeah, I did. George, George Wallace, I seen him do a stand-up, and he said... um. He said his brother-in-law died, and if he was to tell the truth, and he said they wanted to remember him as he was. He said they wanted to remember him as he was. They had to put his ass in the handcuffs in the coffin. You know what I mean? Like, yo, and we yeah. go out our way to say good things about bad uh, people well, sometimes, well, I, you know? I, I started noticing that. Uh, I started noticing that going to, to criminals. Uh, I wouldn't say criminals, but street guys. Street guys feel... I notice every street guy, and these are some of my friends uh, and people that I personally know. Uh, they were killers, and, and, and they were robbers, and uh, some of them died in dope houses. Uh, and I noticed when when they preach the funeral, everybody go to heaven. Yeah. But I I don't care how bad a person is. When they land in that casket at the church house, nobody says he was a no good rotten motherfucker. Nobody says that. Yeah, well, they ain't got to say that, but they ain't got to make up that other shit, though. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, look. Uh, well, if man, this nigga owe me some money. <laughs> Somebody got to stand up and say, if man, this nigga owe me some money. He just borrowed the money. Uh, and he ain't been. So somebody got to tell the truth. Because it's my sincere belief that dash in between your birthday and the time you die, that's the tell all. You, you, you want me to tell you something, Charleston, man? Listen, right? So, it wasn't until I made headlines that I really understood the importance of my reputation at large. Because I had, a, I had a, a reputation in a certain circle, and I was comfortable with that reputation. But when that reputation went mainstream, I was uncomfortable with it. Yeah. The things that people are proud of nowadays are not really things 
that I would ever be proud of. But you know what that did? It 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 spurred me to do everything I could to try to erase what people knew about me, thought they knew about me, everything. My legacy means a lot to me, which is why I I, I get myself involved in so many positive things. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you get accused of murder, right? And you meet a woman, a decent one. So I like decent women. Now, I don't even date women with tattoos or none yeah. of that shit. You understand yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Nah, I ain't got nothing against women with tattoos. Do your thing, baby. You know what I mean? I'm an old guy, right? But anyway, those kind of women, they'll do a, a check. The minute that it comes up that you was a suspect in murder or something, if that's just boom, and not just any murder. Well, that, that uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah. And, and I don't mean to cut you off. That's how deadly an arrest record can be. Oh, man. Be because even with an arrest record, you can be arrested for something. You can be completely innocent, go to trial, be found not guilty, and be cleared of all wrongdoings. But when somebody type it in, they see you Bloop. arrested for it. Yeah. And there go to assass uh, there go to character assassination. Thank God I've never character. been arrested for a sex crime because that gotta be one of the worst things. Yeah. Even if you're acquitted. You Even know what you're I mean? Acquitted, you still you know? pop up. Oh man. Yeah. Cause I went to trial. I was convicted. I was convicted of a um felonious assault. I went to trial on six B felonies in nineteen eighty six. I was twenty one. My charges were attempt murder, kidnapping, robbery one, two, and three, and felonious assault. I was acquitted of the, the most serious charges, but the, the felonious assault, I couldn't get around that because there was hospital records to substantiate the assault, the yeah. alleged assault. Yeah. And the individual who, 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 who brought forth the charges, he was a confidential uh, informant, and he was, I didn't know that at the time, but... He was actually trying to set us up. But anyway, to make a long story short, I appealed that conviction and I had it overturned. Today I am conviction free. But here's the thing though, I was facing 18 to 3rd to 25 at 21. And the jury was deliberating because the individual, the witness, the CI, he was a, a sexual deviant. He had, was feeling up women on the subway and all kind of, all this yeah. came out while he yeah. was on the stand. Cause when you take the stand, they get to dig in your business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so anyway, the people didn't believe nothing he said, but they couldn't dispute the fact that his the, head got busted. The record, over. they couldn't dispute the, the, the hospital. Record. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I got convicted based on that. So I, while the jury was deliberating, they offered me five years probation, Charleston. I don't know why I didn't take it, hmm. but it was the it was a pivotal decision in my life, because had I taken that five years probation, I would have had a felony conviction. This and in the eighties. This is in the eighties. This is nineteen eighty six. Yeah. Yo, had I taken it, I would have had a, a felony conviction, and in twenty ten, I started a mental health business, providing services for people in D.C. Um, Medicaid approved, had to do my background check and all that. That decision that I made in 86. Would affect had, you 20 years it down the road. It would have stopped me from being able to go into business in 2010. Yeah. And I didn't have the foresight. So to me, I just feel like that was God with me at that yeah. moment. You know, I was a little brazen too because I told the lawyer, look, I ain't pay you all this money to get a conviction. You know, I had to pay a lawyer. And I, was little, I, was, I was wild. I was 21 in the 80s in New York. Now, now what part of, let's take us back to the 80s. What, what, what part of New York you were born in? Uh, By the way, y'all, this is my man Curtis from Schoon TV. I know you yeah, uh for those that don't know, man, this is my guy Curtis, man. Uh, <laughs> uh just a new episode, uh her game related. We just, we've been talking from the time we walked in from the door all the way oh, back. Time. We really done started the show and didn't even know we started the show. So let us officially start the show, man. What's up? This your boy Charleston White. <laughs> uh another episode of the game related podcast. What's up with it, dude? See, y'all know what time it is. That boy dude, man. We finna see, we finna drop some more game. Uh, we, man. we got a uh for for the young people, so I hope all the young people tuned in, man. My say T C V crowd, uh, this 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 I I say this gonna be a historic night, uh, for us, uh, who we got on 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 the platform tonight, uh, the the jewels, the message, the experiences, 
uh, and the knowledge that he go share and drop. Uh, but the life experiences uh, is really what we want people to take from. Uh, that's how my mama told me, uh, experience is not the best teacher. It's the, it's the hardest. You know, if you have to learn from experience, that's the hardest teacher. So I can tell you what I went through so you don't have to go through it. You just take my word for it, man, and then that way you don't have to go through it. Those, those are the smartest lessons. So with that being said, man, you want to introduce yourself to the crowd, tell the people who you are, where you're from, and, uh, yeah, yeah, what it is. I'm Curtis Schoolham. Um Once upon a time, they used to call me the snake charmer. Not everybody. <laughs> Certain people. <laughs> I, don't, I don't carry that name no more. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, man, listen. <laughs> God damn. Listen. Say, y'all, listen. There's a whole bunch of nigga named Shoot Em Up Bobby. There's a whole lot of nigga named Knock Em Out Ray Ray. Yes, a whole lot of nigga named Gorilla FB K Bobby something. This nigga say his name was the Snake Charm. Yeah, it was. It's, it Think was, deep now, y'all. That's what I'm He talking cold. Snake see, charm. Mister nigga charm the snakes. I never gave. I never gave myself that name. You know. Somebody else gave it Other to. Other people you. gave it to. That's me. even more dangerous. You know. Um, <laughs> they started referring to me because I had a way of dealing with certain types of individuals. You the know. bullies. Yeah. The gorillas. Know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The, the, the circles that walk upright, as they say. You and, know and, what and, I mean? And, and, yeah, and, that, and, way, and, that way, and, and, that way, and, and, that way. That and, way, that way. And they go around that sheep. That way. Yeah, they love, they love to go around you know, sheep. You know, um, it, it's it's about understanding people. So anyway, that that that's what I was known now, as. Now, I'm, now, I've been low-key my whole life. So, so let me ask you this. Ed, but before we get to how you got the name Snake Charmer, what part of New York you got to be born in? To, to, to develop this kind of tenacity? I don't, you know, to me, New York is like, it, at least my New York, I, this new New York, I, I'm not gonna put it down, but it's not the same New York that I grew up in. You know, when, when I grew up, you know, men were men and diamonds were a girl's best friend. You know, all these, mm. all mm -hmm. these like flashy dudes, and, and if you wanna be flashy and dripping and whatever, I mean, that's your thing, but, you had to have a certain fortitude to even flex back then. And I don't mm. think that exists today. You mm. know what I mean? Can I mm. stop you right there? That's good game. See, this for my, this for, my, this for my slow learners. Mm. Now, I got to bag him up. He said we're, when men were men. Now, I've heard that before. I've heard when men were men, but I never heard when diamonds was girls. Best friend. Yeah. Men didn't wear diamonds. Not not like they do now, you know the big diamonds and these diamond hair, hair and diamond, all this. Diamond, diamond, diamond. Diamond. Yeah, you know, oh, that, we I'm going love. back to gold. <laughs> yeah. I'm going back to gold and brief draws. <laughs> Go say I'm going back to gold, straight gold and brief draws. <laughs> look, look, you know, men did have some diamonds, but nowadays, man, they just you know they flooded. Too many it, diamonds. Man. Yeah, diamonds you know, on my check, diamonds on. Look, and for the brothers that got it, man, I ain't hating on you, man. Do your Cause thing, I got man. a bad ass diamond chain. Cause you know, I got a bad head motherfucker coming, man. Look, look, ah, Don ah, King had a bad ah, diamond chain, man. and he one of the original cheese, you know what okay, I mean? Yeah. But I, I'm just saying, like, when I was running around New York, you got to understand New York in the 80s, at the time, and, and this is no boast or nothing. I don't boast on nothing negative. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm here to talk about my transformation. But in order to understand and appreciate the transformation, you gotta, you gotta know where I come from. Gotta and, understand and that, where you and, come and, from. And I'm glad he Facts. said that. Facts. Facts. That's the whole concept of the game related podcast. Uh we don't glorify nothing. It's to get an individual uh, uh in front of these cameras and capture their backstory to understand where they came from so we can show you and most, for the most part, man, it'd it be great stories of redemption mm. uh, of men and, and women who come from a certain element of society and, and overcame the obstacles and barriers, wrong choices, failures, bad decisions, uh, pain, hurt, and, and and then they evolved into, you know, pro-social pro and productive individuals today. So that's the whole concept of the Game Related Podcast. Mm. With that being said, uh, my mama told me... Uh, Son, everything in, in this life you overcome by the power of your testimony. The things that you've already overcame, that's your power. And that's how you continue to overcome. So uh, I'm glad you hit you, you hit that on the note. We're not glorifying anything. Never glorifying. Just go get Never. deep. Just go get Never. real, real. Just go get real, real deep. Uh, and so I, we just want, this is not no glorification of anything. This is to, uh, this man is for the bare soul. His mind, his will, 
and it's emotion uh, in hopes that others can learn from it and, and, and take from it uh, and, and create some alternatives and resources to whatever condition that they're in now. So uh, with that being said, uh, New York in the 80s uh, was, was hard. Yeah, you know what? Most urban places was tough, but I could, I could speak on New York on a first-hand basis. Impoverished? Um, Extreme impoverished? How it was, was the, the crack. The crack changed things. Okay. The crack made it very violent. Prior to the crack, we had the street gangs. And by the way, for us, street gangs were for kids. They was for like high mm -hmm. school students. Yes. You know, because when you're a kid, you prove how tough you are. We didn't have men in street gangs. You know, 18, 19 tops. Take notes, take notes. 18, 19 tops were in street gangs. And um, when you become a man, you graduate to becoming a gangster if you want to continue on in that life. And the difference is, right, gangsters are money motivated and gangsterism is is imposing your will through the use or threat of violence. That's all gangsterism is. Mm. The use or threat of violence. It's not about your jewelry. It's not about your, your designer. Mm. Money. It's not it's that about none way. of that. It's about that your body. Way. You, that know, way. And you can't be a gangster in rap if you got people like Leo Cohen and Jimmy Ivey pimping you out. No matter how much your how big your entourage is, how many fights y'all have in the VIP, these white boys is just pimping y'all out. Elliot Grange and his father, Lucian Grange, with 6ix9ine and all of this. So when I see these dudes, they're not, they're not gangsters in the in the way that I understand. In the real world of mm. gangsters. Mm. Man, he just broke down yeah. gangsters so, to the so, core. So, Wait, so, man, hey, so, man. So, so for the most part, gangsters are ghosts. They're invisible faces. Yeah, that you know they 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 not seen, but they're felt. You understand what I'm saying? And they're known, but they're not seen. Yo, listen, man, they're known within the circles. They need to be known. You know, there used to be a time. Facts, homie. <laughs> there used to be a time where, yeah. where a man would be a gangster and his neighbors would just think he's a, a businessman, an entrepreneur. Yeah. Nobody promoted that. You know what I mean? But hip-hop, man, I hate to say mm. it, hip-hop kind of well, brought it out in the open where it was fashionable well, to claim these things. It's cosplaying. Hip-hop originates out of New York. It did, but in we got to pay it in full. Ever were were all I know is rappers mimic the street niggas. That's all I know. But look, we we gonna get into it now. You gonna get me started, right? <laughs> yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. The New York I came up in was violent. By 1991, the last year of David Dinkins, uh, mayor, uh, and there was 2,248 homicides, but it had been. It had been inching up to that ever since 95. It was like 1,800, 1,900. Like seven years in a row, we was around 2,000 or more murders per year. When you think about it, right, that's about five to six murders every single day of a year. I personally know about 30 people who were murdered from back then. So when, when, you, when you come out of that element, we're not talking about shooting people in the studio. We're not doing a drive-by in the sound booth. Like, it was just going down like that. You understand what I'm saying? And not just in New York, by the way. In Baltimore, in D.C. It, yo, it was... Philly, Jersey. Yeah. Yo, it, all over. You understand what I'm saying? That the, the, the 80s was a different type of time. When that crack hit the streets, the lawlessness came. You know what I mean? And it was... And also, there was an introduction into the game, the drug game, with kids, because prior to that, Kids wasn't in the streets That's at all. That's right. Yeah. It was men. Yeah. You know what I mean? Grown yeah. men. So when yeah. you got kids, you got to understand that neurologists have said that the human brain isn't even fully developed until 25. Yeah. So when you're giving all these kids 19, 18, 17 guns and drugs, yeah. they're not using the best knowledge. And there goes the mayhem. You know, or there's another saying that the only thing worse than organized crime is disorganized crime. So you had a lot of disorganized crime with the with the you know the incursion of children and adolescents in, in, yeah. in, into that men, world. Men men showing women the game, bringing them in the game, and now okay. the woman selling dope like the man. Every you know, it was just a free for all. It really decimated our communities. You know what I mean? And when I went down to D.C. in the eighties, like after back to my my trial, I appealed the conviction, pending appeal. I went to Hampton. I was a 22-year-old freshman. Going into trial, I had planned that if I if I lost... You in college? 
22 year old freshman because I, I had made up my mind to go to trial and I had to give my lawyer something to work with in case I, I lost. Did that before. Yeah, in yeah. case I was thinking ahead. I wasn't thinking about it. I've done that before. Yeah. You understand what facts, I'm saying? Facts. So but when I went to when I went to college, I met people from DC and Baltimore and I went back to the streets and was doing what I was doing in their cities and towns. And what I learned is that man, the crack that would sell for five dollars in New York sold for fifty dollars in DC. Why is that? Because the more affluent your clientele, the more money you stand to make. And D.C., just like Detroit, they had thriving black economies due to the federal government and in Detroit due to the auto industry. And the drugs decimated all that black progress. So so, 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 so what do you mean by that is uh, the federal government hired, hires a lot of black people. To this day. To this day. To this probably, day. Probably, I mean, if you go look at more, they hire a lot of black people. Mm. Detroit had the auto industry. Man. Correct. Man, they had GM, Ford, uh, Chrysler, Chrysler, all yeah, of all them. that. Yeah. Uh, man, it was it was it was it was it was vibrant. So uh, black that, people had money. That that built uh, that black faction of, of of America helped establish uh, America's black middle uh, America's middle class. Yeah, man, some of the most affluent black people I ever encountered came out of the Detroit area, the D.C. area, and the Atlanta area. You know, they had some some other things going on in the South. They didn't have those big, big employers like the government. But black people did well in Atlanta. Yeah. Not this new uh, Hollywood Atlanta, nah, you know nah, what I mean? Because, nah, nah, nah. you, you know, some of the, the, the most prominent black mayors came from Atlanta, D.C., uh, and Detroit. Uh, Maynard Jackson, uh, Marion Barry, yeah. and Coleman Young. Yeah. The senior, the first, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so, even, even, uh, yeah, Atlanta produced some of uh, uh, America's top black real estate moguls. Man, there's a cat down there now named Egbert Perry yeah. that I'm trying to get with that, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> like, like, yeah. like and listen. That, that, and that's, that's, see, that's what we see now. Uh, uh, today's Atlanta is standing on the backs of those Atlanteans who, who, who did everything right to get us where we are today. When we fucking everything up. Yeah, man. It, 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 the drugs, man. The drugs. The drugs was the first way. Well, actually, heroin was the, uh, well, the that, number well, one. Well, in the that's, 70s. that's where I was going to take you back yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, so, Heroin was number one. I was going to ask you the, the the violence between uh uh the heroin epidemic. Uh, uh my grandmother name is the heroin epidemic. My grandmother's in her eighties. That's the heroin epidemic. Uh, the jazz crew. Those were the rappers back then. Heroin was big amongst the jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference between uh, the violence that the heroin, or did the heroin produce the same kind of violence mm -hmm. that the crack did? You know, not that I'm an expert on any of this, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but we done read a lot of books, we done done a lot of research and studies. a lot studies. of movies, yeah, yeah right, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But some of the coldest killers were heroin addicts. Mm -hmm. Some of the coldest killers were heroin addicts. Mm -hmm. But the crack, though, it was because cocaine is associated with sex and party. Euphoria. Euphoria. Yeah, Euphoria. You know, hey, so the, killer yeah, the killer with the fucking. Yeah, the killer with the fucking. I'm yeah, killing, yeah. nigga. Put the gun down. Come on. Yeah. Let's fuck you home. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was, even though the heroin did play a role somewhat, but not to the same extent as Coke. Coke is just a good time drug. And before you know it, you just got a habit. You know, and, and smoking crack, they used to call it free basin because they used the Bacardi 151. Well, and then they, uh, <laughs> well, well, uh, that's a see free basin was a New York thing, even though it was down here. That was rich people shit. Yes, we were rich, wild, yeah, 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 set some fire. fire, yeah. But crack they made it accessible for everybody. Yeah, well, well, crack made the agriculture states be able to get it. Too. Yo, it made see, it cheap. Yeah. But you know what? You said something earlier though. Yeah. When you said that back then, yeah, you had gangsters that performed a certain type of way, right? Yeah. You let the street gangs, the high school gangs. Mm -hmm. When you elevated, they took over the crack era. yeah. So when you elevated to this level of a gangsterism, now you moving different. But guess what? Here come the crack game. The crack game was a fast game. So when it started becoming a fast game, you got the kids that's involved. Cause back in the game, in the heroin addict, 
Kids weren't involved with that. They weren't involved. So now here come the crack era. They involved with that. Now here come the organized crime. That when we speak about organized crime down here, it's different than what y'all speak about it down there. Yeah, it ain't mafia. It's totally down different. Here. They getting a nigga down here off childhood friends. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga went see? to school together, y'all in the club taking pictures together, and they hitting them with the Rico conspiracy. And you know, um, taking advantage of the poor black people with that correct, shit. Correct, correct, correct. Because they're not really organized no. like that. To, it's to, not. To, war to warrant all of that. It's not. Nah. Yeah, they're, they're not. Nah. You know, and, and it's funny you said that because. Organized crime means exactly that in New York, man. Uh, New York is a very cosmopolitan city. Um, and what I mean by that is it is diverse. You got you got Albanians, Greeks, uh, Chinese in Chinatown, the Russia. triads, the Tongs, the Russians, absolutely, in, 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 uh, in Brooklyn. And, you know, you, you, got, you got so many different ethnic groups, and they all have their own different organized crime sections and what they do. And one of the advantages to me of coming up in New York is my exposure to all these different people. It gives you with them. It gives you world geography. Yeah, and you learn to do things differently too. And you know, when Facts. you're when you're able, when you are able to go across different lines and deal with different kinds of people it expands what you could bring back to your own people. It, it, you know what I mean? When uh, you make those kind of... Well, it, it's like it's like the, the man coming from this village, being able to go over here to this village, meeting the chiefs of this village, boom, exchanging resources, boom. Coming, and coming back over here. Now, y'all might not even like each other, yeah. but it's the ex the border system, yeah. the exchange of resources. Can you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Yeah, because... And you, we gonna leave it like that. You opening up a new market for them. And now you have a new plug for yourself. Exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? like, exactly. Hey, yeah. And nowadays everybody just talking about the Migo Mexicans and the SS all right. and all that. But it used to be so many more opportunities in that regard if you were looking for those things. You well, know? well when, facts, when, facts. When, when, when when I think about the Bumpy Johnson story, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the hot you know, the the uh, Lawrence Fishburne played, you know, Bumpy Johnson in the movie Hoodlums. Mm -hmm. Uh you think about his interaction with the mafia. Uh, they give us the movie American Gangster. Uh, mm -hmm. You think about Frank Lucas, his his interaction with the mafia. For us down south, that's that's big screen movie shit. Big screen. The nigga won't never get to meet our Italian mafia. <laughs> you know what I mean? And to these niggas go to the feds and run into the Gotti boys yeah. and all, all that kind of shit. Yeah. But other than that, boy, we country boy, we looking at that shit, that Hollywood shit. Yeah. But when you go to New York, I've never in my life seen a Popeye's chicken wrote in Chinese. You can't understand what it's saying. You yeah. just know that's Popeye's chicken. I've never seen banks with different, so I've seen different national flags flying, and it was almost confusing. Uh, it was like being in the world of countries, not not, not a hood. Boom. I, didn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, culturally, I couldn't walk in New York as a southern black man because I'm in this this was like going in different countries. Yeah, you go Washington Heights, or Dykeman, you might as well talk Spanish because it's all Dominicans up there. You know what I mean? Mm. You go to Crown Heights, it's, it's all West Indians. Yo, you're just going to be hearing different accents, different yeah, twangs, yeah, all over the place. Yeah, it was driving me you, crazy. When I, people, I, it was blowing when, my mind. When you see people in New York that look black, yeah, you go to their house with them and you hear their parents and you be like, oh shit. Where you from, man? You they know were, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, my friends was like Jamaicans, Guyanese, all of that. You know what I mean? Like, I would say maybe about easily 40 to 55% of people in New York come from the South. So, But if another 40% come from somewhere else, that's a lot, man. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, so what, what's the dynamic of the public school system? It got to be fucked up with all them different... Man, come on, man. But, you know, man, and that's another thing, Charleston, you know, we we, we, we go, we're going to circle back on everything. And I ain't putting New York down. No, 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 I ain't putting it down. I'm just listen, saying. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, man. I went to Brooklyn Tech. I went to Catholic school first, right? Mm -hmm. I went to Catholic school because my parents, being foreigners, they emphasize education. So I went to Catholic school. And um, I've always done well in school. I did well in school without even trying. Yeah, without I mean, studying, yeah, you mean, understand? Yeah, all the way up to the college level without studying. Yo, yo that's right. And, and and you know what? I can see that in you. 
because I see how your brain functions. And I recognize mm. that. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, Brooklyn Tech was one of the crown jewels of the New York City public school. You had to take a test, right? I went, I went to that school. I studied chemistry, biology, physics, calculus, trigonometry, all, man, listen, foundry, architecture. I did all of that shit in high school. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But in that school that I went to, yeah, about 30% of those kids were Chinese. Yeah. In the 80s? In the 80s, bro. I graduated mm. in 82. 30%? At least 30 Well, well that, that's, China, that's, that's when they had the, the, the exchange, I think. Um, no, at least 30% of the students in that one school, because it's a mm. specialized school. Okay. You okay. got to understand Dang. something about foreigners, man. You see, I think a lot of times black Americans, and I identify as a black American. Yeah. I, I don't know nothing about nothing, no in no other country. This is it for me, right? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Let me be clear, man. Yo, let, 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 let me be clear. Yeah, is, but, yeah, I don't know but, shit about nothing, but this is. But 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 foreigners, man, they have they emphasize education, and what's going on in the black community is there are no political solutions for cultural deficiencies. They just aren't. You know, you can you can vote for whoever you want. You can work the political system, but it has to happen in the house. Facts. The, 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 you know, Facts. Foreigners push their kids to do well. So somebody might be saying, "Hey, watch me!" Like shit, your parents are pushing you to do well. Look at all the shit you got into. You know what I mean? But again, to be successful in anything, right or wrong, requires a degree of intellect. You understand? What nobody tells you is that prison is filled with a lot of non-critical thinkers. Not all, but most of them. Thanks. Most of them couldn't think their way out of a wet bed. Uh, you, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, man, I was in a holding cell in 1995 in New York. I was driving my brother's truck. I don't know why I was doing that. Because he done had the whole, the VIN numbers changed and all this, you know. Yeah. The whole car was just bogus. He got a slammer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the holding cell, and I'm sitting there. And, 95, and this was key for me, too, because that's when I started feeling like, yo, I can't do this no more. And you got to be honest with yourself, too. A lot of us ain't honest with ourselves. Me in the 80s, I might have been locked up thinking about what I'm going to do when I get it on the street. I even told a lawyer one time, look, man, if you take this money, and if, if you take the money from my people for your pay, ain't going to be no more where that comes from. You get me on the street and the street's going to pay you. The lawyer may bail me out. That's how I was in the 80s. Yeah. In the 90s, I'm sitting in that cell and I'm like, yeah, I can't do this shit no more. And you know what the stark thing to me was? It might have been about 18, 19 people in the bullpen. They call it the bullpen. And I might call it that here too. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they were debating who had more money. Everywhere you go? Puff Daddy or Master P. Oh, Yo, God and damn. I and, and listen. Oh, <laughs> God I'm damn. been in jail and seen God that nigga doing it. Man, I been in jail waiting look, to look. get out. Seeing that nigga talking about who got more money. Yo, who? Look. Man. man, trust me, man. I've been in all kinds of situations, and nothing scared me more than thinking that, yo, I can't spend a long time around these fucking idiots, yo. Yo, I, I was like, yo, Thanks, what, what would I talk to these people about? That's when you start realizing that you're growing, you know, you're evolving. Because when you're young, you got a lot of testosterone, and you're looking at the physical challenges. To me, the streets was always... I was never motivated by money, by the way. I was motivated by the challenge. But by the time 95 rolled around, I was like 31 years old, and the challenge was like, I already met the challenge. I don't need to do this no more. And, and, and beating these people don't mean nothing because they were born to be beat, a lot of them, man. You understand? I, I hate to put it like that, but they was born to be beat. They were sitting in the cell arguing with more money. Master Facts. P or Puff Daddy. Well, let me, let me not talking about their case. Mm -hmm. Not talking about, yo, how they going to get... Nothing. Listen, listen, listen. listen Oblivious listen. to the reality. Let me take you even deeper than that. Once they get through arguing about Master P and their partner, they start bringing up the niggas in the streets. And that's when the people press the record button. 
Yo. Say man, such and such got this. Now nah, man, that nigga got that nigga got that Bentley. Now nah, man, big big Yo. dad. They started talking about the niggas in the streets with the money. Boy, they gave me a headache, man. I sat there, I had a headache. That was my version of scared straight. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. That's deep. That's deep. Yo, look. But Yo. that's deep though. Yeah. That 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 what that does it shows how deep you was. Yeah. How far away you were from the stupidity. The ignorance, the the so the, in ten years, the, he done watched yeah, yeah, this yeah. shit switch. Exactly. From the eighties to the nineties. You don't watch this shit. You don't watch niggas all go over nothing niggas. Yo. I, I I sat there, man, I was like Man, ain't that's I, I, crazy. I don't, I don't ain't that's deep. Be around these dudes, you know what I mean? Like, so anyway, I so spoke, that's when your switch came on. You see, that's when my I switch came on. Yeah, because you gotta be honest to yourself, man. You could lie to the whole world, man, but you should never lie to the man in the mirror. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? The minute I started feeling like I can't do this no more, it means I had to change my life. If you know you can't do that time. Don't I did. be out here. I did breaking the law. I did when I was. You know when I, I was when I when I was 20 years old, man. This is my word. I felt like on any given day, I could get a system 10, which meant I probably could have pushed it to 15. Like I could have walked any day, it wouldn't even have shook me. I'd have been, give me that. You one of them niggas that be hot about it. I'm ready to crash out right Say, now. Man. <laughs> crash out. You, you one of them niggas. Yo, but by yeah. the time I got third in my 30s, yo, I was like, at 30, I was like, maybe I could, I could give them five. But by 32, I was like, man, I ain't trying to give these people nothing. So I turned my life. I, I started changing my life around. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. what you're saying is so real because it was a time where it was it was I had to go to I think I had to go to prison. You look forward to it. Like I hear all the homies come home, they cut up, they stock it, they walking you around, look forward to it. and you look at it, and I'm like, damn. And I'm watching the gravitation of our culture, how they gravitate to those kind of people. Look, man, we used to buy the, the janitor suits to look like we was in jail on the street. Man. That lifestyle. Yeah. That lifestyle. I used to be in- I That used lifestyle. To, I used to be in recess in sixth grade, developing my walk, talking about how, when I get to prison, how, what I'm gonna do. Like, how you know, I'ma talk? You, you know, I was in the sixth grade on the playground talking like that. Man. Thanks, man. You know what turned me out though? It wasn't even the movie, it was the soundtrack to Superfly. I would play that shit over the and old. over and over on an eight track. That's how long ago that was. The old nigga played it. He used to play it all the time at, at the club. Yo, yeah. man, the soundtrack to Superfly. I was just in a fantasy world. I was like eight years old, man. Like, yo, I want to be like this guy. You know, beating the man, beating the system. Man. I used to watch the black exploitation movies. Me too. I'm the product uh, of that. Hell up in Harlem. Yeah. Uh, Come back, Charleston Blues. Yeah. I used to sneak in the movie theater and see them joints, and they had a profound impact on me, man. Uh, People say that the art does not influence people. It does. It does. It really does. Yeah. You know, and, and I, when I saw everybody pro- knows it, but they deny it because they don't want to be accountable for what happens from it. Thanks. Uh, when I saw when I saw uh, the Last Dragon. I done seen plenty of Bruce, I done seen Bruce Lee movies like a motherfucker. <laughs> Me too. But boy, yeah. when they came out, what was it, 87, 88, The Last Dragon? And Bruce put, Leroy. Bruce Leroy. <laughs> uh, nigga, I want to be show enough. Show enough? Yeah. The show good yeah, 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 I want to be show enough. Yeah. Uh, but I noticed, and we went to the movie theater to see this. Nigga, everybody done karate for that summer. <laughs> we all, you know, man. You see uh, how we all the same, bro? Yeah. You know we did that? Make noon chucks out of broomsticks and yeah. all that stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> we, we made, we, we we like, made like belts so out of false you know paper. I mean? but yeah. Shit, but yeah. That's why we all wear Michael Jordan tennis shoes when yeah, they come, come out. Come on, man. Yeah. That's why we all listen to the same rapper at the same time. Yeah. There's no variety of us anymore. Yeah. We really all the same. Yeah. Uh, we 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 let the we let the lines divide us. So. Let's let us let us let us speed it up a little bit, uh, because we really going through like the historic part of hip hop as well. So you know, took us through the eighties, we got the nineties. We touched on somewhat of the uh, I'm gonna say the forties, fifties, and sixties because that was the heroin generation. Uh, now you got gang banging in New York. Yeah, that that's a, that's like again that's, that was the music that did that. The gang banging in all in all honesty. In right? New York, Crips and Bloods in New York. You couldn't have ever made me believe check, that would check exist. Check it, check it though, check it. 
I, I, I can help everybody understand how that happened. It happened with the rise of death row and Tupac. <laughs> See, what people don't know is that back then, bloods were a minority in L.A. So you can't explain to me why bloods are a majority everywhere else except where they come from. And it's the music. It's absolutely the music. It's death row. It represented power, Suge Knight, blah, blah, blue, Pac, you know. Exactly. And, and, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. People yeah. love Pac and all that, but you cannot point to a positive contribution that this man did. I'm tired of hearing about Dear Mama. He made one good song and a hundred hit him ups. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I mean, if you like his music, you like his music, but let's not pretend like this and man, he wasn't no real gangster. He was a good kid, just let, misguided and misled. Let, let's not pretend that this man did not sow the seeds of division in the community. And he didn't start off like that. I was at the Jack the Rapper when Pop released his first album, Strictly for My Niggas. Uh, it was it was cool. There was a lot of fighting going on at the Jack the Rapper that year. It started having a lot of fighting. As soon as the L.A. dudes got into the rap game, they came with a certain energy all the time. You know what I mean? All the time. All the time. That so, bully energy all the time. Well, you know. He ain't going to say it. I'm going to say it. They come with, well, because, because that was the whole part of, of, of their well, gangsterism, was know, the bulliness. So, so and I remember there was fighting. And the one, one thing that struck, struck out to me, stuck out to me was that Pac was on stage and he grabbed the mic. And even though it was black people attacking black people, he was promoting turning on the police, you know, and, and that's a very familiar tactic that I see. Because we have no power over our own people, we look to find a unifying target, be it white supremacy, police brutality. We can't manage what's going on in our own community because so, the minute we try to tell our own people not to do this, they be like, man, who the fuck are you, man? Shut the fuck up. Nigga, I kill Fact. you, nigga. Yo, Fact. And, and everybody First knows. thing come out they mind. Nigga, I kill you. Yo, everybody knows this. This is why Farrakhan is in Chicago and he can't do shit about what's going on over there because nobody cares. Nobody cares what he has to say. If he's talking about white people, everybody going to show up. And it gives the illusion that he has some influence over these people. But if you can't stop people from doing what they're doing, especially when it's self-destructive, you don't have no influence. That's why if, I if, stand if, up against this shit. If you can get people to march to D.C. and blame white people, we good for that. And I'm not saying that white people don't deserve some blame. But what, what do we control with each other? You understand what I'm saying? Mm. This is your crew in here. If they start acting up, if you can't tell them to, yo, man, chill, then I got to be like, well, this ain't really your crew. Yeah. You don't you have no power. <laughs> you ain't got no power. You ain't got no power. And, 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 and if, you look at, if you look at who we call leaders, all they do is express a safe perspective that keeps them from being scrutinized or challenged because they want to travel the path of least resistance, get their clout, and their little bit of change or whatever they work in the room for, and go about their business. Mm. See, a real leader, man, would say the things that are unpopular because they need to be said. See, and that's where leadership comes from. Not that you're trying to find favor. Man, he just broke down and you know got... I mean? Why you listen, say, listen, man, listen, listen. You, I've you, been you, trying you, to... You, you, you're a New York brother. Is that what happened to Malcolm? You know... Oh, man. Y'all yeah, know me, listen, man. Listen, See, listen. We, we only know I'm about, Malcolm. I'm going I'm 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 to say... And it's not to, to you know belittle what? anything. No, I'm not gonna, I think Malcolm was a brilliant, brilliant speaker. And, and, and when I say this, people take offense. I think Umar Johnson is today's Malcolm. You know, he's he, he got a great perspective. He's very... You know, he talks circles around me. Malcolm... I couldn't debate Malcolm. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> However, what did they do? And Malcolm's, great, Ma Malcolm's greatest accomplishment was building the nation of, recruiting people to the oh, nation wow. of Islam, right? Now, check this out. I don't know how much he recruited. Elijah did a lot of work before Malcolm came. Malcolm, with his charisma, he helped, you know, enlist the, the roster, open, drew members. But where Malcolm became irrelevant, and most people don't get it, is when he recruited Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali displaced Malcolm in the nation because now Muhammad Ali was a celebrity, a real celebrity. And 
He was engaging and charismatic. And you will see that as Ali's presence rose in the nation, Malcolm's declined. They didn't need him anymore. He actually recruited his replacement. You understand what I'm saying? Now, and again, no disrespect to Malcolm, but we just got to tell the truth. Speak the truth and shame the devil. Malcolm may have posed with a gun, but he never bust that motherfucker. That's what I you tell know, people all the time. You understand what I'm saying? Elijah Mohammed wasn't with getting no gun. Hey, no, but, nigga, I'm like, but, you don't got no gun. But, but Elijah did have a crew, though. Jeremiah Shabazz and the others out of Philly were the gangsters in the nation. They were the ones that made it possible for Elijah to not get challenged on certain controversial things that I'm not even going to go down the rabbit hole with right now. But everybody knows what they are. And if you don't know who Jeremiah Shabazz is, you got to Google him and look up the Hanafi killings, H-A-N-A-F-I. Because Abdul Khalif, who had converted Lou Alcindor to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he spoke ill of Elijah Muhammad. He wrote letters to Elijah Muhammad calling him a hypocrite, which was a big insult in the nation. And do you know what happened to him for that? The crew from Philly went to his house in D.C., and they just missed them by five minutes. And they killed everybody in the house, drowned the babies and everything. This is documented fact. This is where the nation gets that ferocious reputation from. Mm -hmm. Because they had gangsters. Mm -hmm. And you can't regulate nothing unless you got them kind of people in the cut somewhere. All you people, uh, people pushing... People talking all this and thinking you're going to get up there and talk about how many books you read and, and wild people with your intelligence. You're not going to motherfucking regulate shit unless you could push a button and make shit happen. And that's what kept Elijah afloat. Otherwise, he would have been got challenged. Yo, the, 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 the most hardcore dudes in the nation of Islam were out of Philly and out of New Jersey. And when you look at who killed Malcolm, they came out of Jersey. And who went after Khalisim? They came out of came Philly. Out of Philly. But uh, Jeremiah Shabazz, and he's on YouTube, you should hear what he got to say about Malcolm. He was making fun of Malcolm. He said Malcolm didn't like the work. He said Malcolm just liked to preach. This is what he said. He had Malcolm living with him. You know what I mean? I knew a brother named Sherman Muhammad who knew Jeremiah Shabazz. He said Jeremiah had gold doorknobs in his house in Philadelphia. Real gold doorknobs, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're talking about like in the early 70s, late yeah. 60s. Yeah. This is how he yeah. was moving. Yeah. He didn't get them gold doorknobs selling bean pies. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, real yo, talk, real yo, talk. Yo, man, real there's talk. always a I mean, dark. This deep right here, y'all. Look, 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 man. The strong rule the weak, and the wise rule the strong. Mm. You know and only I mean? the strong can show compassion for the weak. But, but see... But blessed are we both strong and wise, for we maintain an abundance of options. See, when you're strong and wise, you can talk to them in any language that they talk in and deal with them. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, 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 it's like, man, when I see all of these people that we call leaders, and I know they ain't going to bust a grape, so I know they can't move the crowd. They can't move. <laughs> they can't, if, they, if you ain't gonna, you know, and I ain't out here promoting gangsterism, but I understand what gangsterism is. And gangsters run the world. You understand what I'm saying? When Putin was, when, when, they, when, 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 when Ukraine was talking about they want to join NATO, Putin put his troops on their border. He didn't go to the United Nations and make a speech and got a round of applause. He said, y'all ain't going to do it. <laughs> Yo, and y'all see we're at war right now, don't you? Yo, and, and, and that's the only way shit happens. Uh, and that's why we need strong men. We need warriors. Let me, let me, let we me. don't need pontificators. Uh, let, let, we, we can send them out to deliver the message, but somebody got to get their hands dirty let, let, if you want to clean up the community. Uh, man. Let, me, let me just say this exactly, without, without hurting our monetization. Uh, and, I, I, and, and I'm going to keep it politically correct uh, because I got staff that I, I, I got to pay. Uh, there's a there's something that they call the dark web. And, and, and there, are some, there are some groups, there are some individuals, there are some people. They invisible to, invisible to us. Uh, they invisible to us, but they can push a button and make something happen. All day. That's how a 18 year old kid can drive four or five hours and go kill 10 black people. Oh, brother, man, come on now. Woo! Charleston!
Oh, 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 you go in there, huh? You yeah, go in there. Right, well, I got to. I, I got to. So we talking. We see because we don't know gangster, yeah. and, and that's why I use the term. I play gangster. You playing gangster. We playing gangster. No, no, no. This man, we playing. We as black people, we playing with the guns and our concept and our ideology of what Yo, gangster is. Boy, man, listen. It's funny you said that about, not funny like a humorous, but look, man, there's more to what's going on in the world than meets the eye. Facts, man. You know? And, Facts. And, and the truth is a heavy burden. I don't know if people can handle the truth. I don't think so. And, and that's why they, they deny it when you present it to them. That's why you, they don't speak it. They rather just go to hookah and do whatever they do, whatever distractions they indulge in. They don't want to speak it. Yo, man, you know, this 18-year-old kid working at McDonald's, living with his grandmother, he go buy two ARs. Uh, he got this truck. Uh, he's, and uh, he's tactical. Yo, look, look, I'm talking about in Uvalde. You were talking about Buffalo, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about Uvalde. Same, same thing. Same thing. Same it's, thing. It's, it's the same mechanism at work here. Yeah. It's going to be the mental health piece. Listen, I work, <laughs> I work in mental health. I'm being trained and certified in Look, adult, juvenile, and youth mental health. Three I, different components. I, I work in mental health, and I can tell you, by and large, people with mental health and illnesses are more apt to hurt themselves they're than not other people. No, they're not violent. Say, yeah. say man. <laughs> say, hey. Hold on, hold on. They're not violent. All I want is for everybody to catch what he just said. No, they're not violent. Catch what he just said. And I've been saying that for so long. Yeah. I don't want to hear nothing about nobody saying mental health when it got to do with somebody hurting somebody else because you just said you just said they, enough. They, they more apt to hurt themselves than other You just people. said it, man. And there's a pattern. You, you see the, the boy, the man Frank James in New York shoot up the subway with the smoke bombs. Yeah. It, this man, he, he homeless, he renting trucks. Got guns, smoke pop. Where not, they that's, get the money to buy that's not all of this? Health. Yeah, it's not Where, health. There's something else at play here. I know, I, Man, I don't want to say I know what it is, but I have a strong idea, but I don't want to put it out there like facts, that. Facts. I'm not trying to be the black Alex Jones, okay? That's <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm really trying to 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 to, to help us as much as I can, where I can, and I'm not trying to be the the person the, the hero. Facts. I just feel as man. a man, <laughs> I have to step up and do my part. Because in the black community, what we need is more unsung heroes. Yeah. People who do what it has to be done without trying to get recognition and rewards just because they can and they should. You know what I mean? And and by leading by example, I look, man, I'll be 58 in September, right? Look at me. To this day, I still prepare for war. Yeah. All day, every day. My mind is on that. My body. I don't walk around like I'm a pushover, because I'm not. I'm on go because I understand how serious it is out here. Hmm, boy, you all day. Boy and, and let me tell you something else. Not, not, not to scare, Man, not to scare anybody. I love it. Not to scare anybody. But when I walk out the house, if I say my prayers every morning. Yeah, I'm a spiritual man. I'm a believer. I believe in God. I say my prayers every morning. But when I walk out that door, I am ready to die or kill if necessary yeah, for the right cause every single day. Every moment of it. Every moment of it. Because it's that serious out here for us. It doesn't mean you can't have fun. But yo, man, a man has to be a warrior for the people that he loves, his woman, his children. Every and day. you have to have that warrior spirit. And it doesn't mean that I'm a troublemaker mm -hmm. because I'm I'm the most pleased, thank you, excuse me, brother, you could ever want to meet. As a matter of fact, when I see strangers, black men, how you doing, brother? Say, look at black man. Hey, yeah, what's yeah. going on, brother? Yeah, because I try like, to spread that. You like, understand what I'm saying? Like, hey, yeah. what's up, brother? Yeah, yeah. No, hey, like, look at yeah, so. Up. Yeah. I ain't walking around with no kind of, get out my way, man, you don't want none of this, none of that. Yeah. But internally, I am ready for the enemy. 
and it ain't gonna be easy for him. I ain't saying that he that that he gonna lose. I don't know. But he gonna have to. He gonna have to. Uh, uh, he gonna have to eat his Wheaties. He gotta eat his Wheaties though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Facts, I, facts. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, real life. I just real life. Win, win or lose, you got to be ready. You, you gotta, gotta be, be ready. ready. And if you're not ready, you gonna cow out. You are gonna cow out, man. And, and and the thing is, you know, like we was talking earlier. The reason why I say it may sound dramatic, and, 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 but what it is with me, I, I learned this as a young dude when I was wild. When I said I was ready to go to prison for 10 years on any given day, it was part of my psychology. You know, you you own the loss so you can claim the victory. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You own the loss so you can claim the victory. Because people don't win because they're scared to lose. So own the loss from the gate. So you know what? I can handle that. If that's what it is, so be it. And you become so fearless that you fuck around and win, man. You understand? So when I say I walk out the door and I'm ready to die, I go, yo, that, tomorrow's promise to no one, man. No one. No, man, yo, I, I, yo. I, found, I found an old video. Man, I'm cussing out the police. <laughs> man, I'm saying some <laughs> shit. I'm saying I'm ready to die, y'all can shoot me. I'm antagonizing. And I'm saying to myself, man, what the fuck? But that was my mentality because I understood uh, I was in the community fighting for something. I'm on the front lines in the community, uh, working with kids, speaking out against police injustices, uh, going downtown at every city council meeting. Nah, man, you, you got to be ready to die. Look, uh, look. Fucking with these people. Look, man, in 1992, I was in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and my, my cousin, my first cousin, blood cousin, my mom and his mom's sisters, you know we family. You understand yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Ain't no like, question. Yeah. 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 Ain't no but question about this one. Set, set me up to be kidnapped. I came there to help him out. He set me up to be kidnapped. And uh, it was broad daylight. And when they tried to get me to put me in the car, I wouldn't go. Right? And I made up my mind. Because coming out of New York, when I came out of New York, I'm not going with nobody nowhere, man. You going to have to leave me right here. Man, yeah. boy, no, give, <laughs> give it to the world. Yeah. Look, you understand Jeez. what I'm saying? I'm not getting in the car. I, I, I don't care about living five minutes longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, none of that punk shit. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And let me tell you something. The minute I made up my mind that I was ready to die, that's when I got free. You understand yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? And I lived. Yeah. Had I been scared, Ain't no telling what would have happened. Yeah. You know what it is to be kidnapped, abducted, tied up, all this tortured shit. and all this shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't even I can't even I can't even think about it. I, I was I was in a robbery one time. This nigga come through the classy lady. And they tried to put me on the ground. I, don't, I ain't getting on the ground. I'll to hit the register. Man, let's see what's in this goddamn register right here. I ain't on the ground. Let me hear if you rob this motherfucker. But I ain't getting on the ground. Yeah, no, I don't see all the movies how that is. Yeah, I ain't going on the ground. And I'm saying these things, man, not, not, not to big myself up. Somebody got to show men how to be men, these young men. There's not a cold, bro. They just don't know. Well, that's they, how they that's just how, don't know. Well, that's how a lot of niggas get their mamas and them killed. Because when they get put in certain situations, they don't have their mind really made up. Most of niggas in the streets yeah. today, 80% don't have their mind made up to go do life, yeah. to die or to kill. They, that's right. So what happened, they get in situations and some circumstances occur and they pull a gun out and somebody end up dying. And the indecisiveness costs. Impulsiveness, yeah. Oh, look. The impulsiveness, right? So that we'll take that back to brain development. But what none of us groom to be gangsters. See, that's what it, that's what we got. What none of us groom to be I gangsters, think man. That's where we gotta snap at right to this day. We dealing with the youth. We dealing with kids. They never was given the right guidelines on how to be a gangster. We catching cases fresh out of mama house. No man in it. All, more half no. these niggas catching cases at 14, 15, they first felonious no. cases. The police get them. How they know not to snitch? 
They mama coming down there saying, you better tell it. <laughs> so so they so how they so you want him to be gangster? See, now, who taught him the rule? Now this is what's crazy though. What he's saying is hundred percent fact, right? Mm -hmm. We jumped off the porch. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. We went through the system. Do my whole cycle of going through that system. Mm -hmm. The last four years is when I ran into real gangsters. Nigga been down there 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> this is to what I'm saying. I've been down. I've been down here. Eight, I did 18 years flat. Nigga playing gangster doing everything. Listen. <laughs> Playing gangster, doing everything you could call. And then you ran into the real deal. Call me when I ran into the motherfucker that man. You got you had you you locked up how long? I've been locked up thirty seven years. Like God damn. Yes. And you heard what you speak now? Yeah. I heard then. Mm -hmm. And we asked about a reality check. That was my reality that check. That was your reality And check. that's what I say. You get what I'm All saying? All young niggas got to go to prison because this is where they go meet this the real That's the reality man. check. Like, you won't get to really meet them out here because exactly. they ain't talk. So when they hear us talk, when they hear us talk, mm -hmm. Dewberry, man, you talking like that now, nah, man. You gangster, my nigga. Nigga, you don't even know what gangster is. You can't do 40 years. You don't even know what gangster is. You don't even know... What defines the word gangster? You don't understand the orchestration. You don't even understand the goddamn thing because you niggas nowadays will commit a crime and go on Instagram and tell about the goddamn no, no, crime. No, 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 listen, listen, listen. Make songs this, about this, it. This, this tell is, me this, about it. This is when I realized me and my generation not gangster because I started paying attention at the funerals. When they open the casket and, and niggas see that dead body, niggas crying. Oh, oh my nigga, go! Oh, oh, my nigga. <laughs> nigga, we killing people. We we kill, hold up. Let's, let's then go. then you putting your nigga on a t shirt, nigga. Well, that nigga was a gangster. What he doing on a t shirt? I, I you know I, look, I'm not here to promote the wrong values, but I'm gonna say this: in 1987 December, a good friend of mine, Juan Tomas Melendez, got murdered. The individual who murdered him. His name is Ricky Law. Ricky Law was out on parole. We went to the funeral home, myself and three others, and uh, we, we spoke to his mom and all that. Man, we was out looking for Ricky Law. You know how hard we was looking for Ricky Law? Right on Jamaica Avenue where the parole office was. Busy. Busy area, commercial area, shopping, all that. I mean, like going shopping for clothes and all yeah. that. Business area. Yeah. It was one, in one of those buildings, was, I think like 162nd or 63rd Street, I can't remember. And we were parked in the car on the block with the parole office. We had armed parole officers and police at, and we didn't give a fuck. If Ricky Law had showed up, because nobody told the police he did it, but we knew he did it. If Ricky Law had showed up, I wouldn't be here right now talking to y'all. And you know what? At that time in my life, I was okay with that. I owned the loss because my man got killed. And when he was dead, they robbed his body on the ground while he was dead. Turned his pockets out and all that. It was the greatest offense. We went to the funeral home, talked to his mom. We didn't even stay. We left the damn funeral home because we was trying to get Ricky before Juan went in the ground. You understand what I'm saying? So I know, I know, I know what it is, man. I know what it is. But again, again, man, you got to think. We put ourselves in situations. Sometimes, man, God saves us from ourselves. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? He not save you from nobody <laughs> but yourself. But yourself. Hmm. Because That's I, deep. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, yo, God. God, I don't want to be that fucked up. Where you gotta save me from me. I've been, I've been that guy a few times, yo. I've been that guy a few times, and that's why I try to do so much, so much positive things now. Because I feel like I was spared, man. Yo, man, when I look back at my life, I said, God damn it, you, you didn't like yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was you doing? Yeah, like you just trying yeah, to yeah. throw it away? Like you, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? All this stuff that they glamorize now, right? 
And you don't have to be a gangster to be a real man. Let me say that. Real life. A real man is above a gangster. Real life. All the things that gangsters do that are honorable are right in alignment with what men do. That's what makes it honorable. You understand what I'm saying? That's what oh. makes the gangsterism honorable because he's trying to align with men's principles. That's it's just right. That, it's yeah. just that he's pretending Yo, over here the, and then coming back. Yeah, there, I got you. There's no higher title for a male child to have than to be an honorable man. Grown man. Yo, going to work, taking care of his family, his kids. There's nothing more respectable than that. Protecting your family, you go to work every day. But if somebody come in that door, they over your dead body, literally and figuratively. Life, yeah. real understand? life. That's a real, real life. There's nothing more, no more admirable than that. Yeah. So all this other talk, like people taking the scenic route, and they going through gangsterism, like I did as a kid. It was like a, a rite of passage. I wanted to demonstrate valor and honor and all these things, but I. That's not the only place where you could demonstrate that. Yeah. Yeah, that that's one of the most, you know. Yeah. There's actually there's actually some manhood principles and Boom. training that you can go through. That's right. Where you don't have to go through the exactly, path. exactly. Because what you really want to be is not a gangster. It's you want to you want to be a man. You want to be a, In a grown true sense man. of the word. You want to be a man. And I I, I think I, I was gonna ask you, well, how how does a how does a one walk itself back from being you know, going to the path of gangsterism, but you you, you answered that, that that question because if you understood what a gangster is trying to align with, it's what the principles of a man walk walk on. The honorable ones, anyway. You know, you yeah. got the scumbags, the slimes, and yeah, all that. Yeah. They do what they do, but yeah. they ain't got no kind of honor and integrity. No. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. But when when you find yourself in that world and you're looking for honor and integrity, it might be a a, a cue that. That world is not for you. See, like my thing is this, right? I come through that world, but but I am not of that world. Yeah. Mm, See what I'm yeah. saying? Thanks. I, I, I come through it, but I am not of it. You know, I, I'm going to drop this, right? So in, in May of 2002, May or June, I had a dream. So I was fucked up, man, because, you know, back in 95, after the Puff Daddy debate and all that, I started turning my life around, which means I ain't had no money no more. Yeah. Shit going bad. Midlife you know? crisis now. Yo, yeah. Oh, man. Because yeah. you, 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 you don't put so much energy and ties into this. This is your network. You don't know how to do nothing else. So that transition period is rough. Damn, But so you got to tough it out, though. So anyway, May, June of 20, 2002, I had a dream. I dreamt I was in the audience of a talk show. And, and the guest was a gypsy psychic. No bullshit. This happened. As the guest come out, she pointed at me and said my name. In my dream, now I said, if you want to impress me, tell me how to get rich. And, and, and the woman said, you have to come out of the fire if you want the light to shine on you. Immediately my eyes opened and I sat up on the bed. And I was like, yo, what the fuck was that? You got to come out of the fire if you want the light to shine on you. Like, oh, shit. Months went by. I had no idea. I was like, yo, I'm not doing this. I'm trying to, because anytime I'm down, I try to figure out what am I doing what wrong. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. Who mm -hmm. am I dealing yeah. with? I shouldn't be. Yeah, what yeah. woman yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. Exactly. A, yeah, what woman I'm laying with. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. even want to go there. Yeah. I'm yeah. 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 look at everything, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, look. Who I'm riding in the car with. I'm trying to shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. See, I'm telling you, we all got more in common if we yeah. just talk yeah. with each other. You right. understand what I'm saying? So I'm trying to figure out what the fuck, what am I doing wrong? What, who am I with that I shouldn't be with? All right, cool. October 30th, 2002. Jam Master J gets murdered. I get a phone call. They be like, yo, you heard what happened? I said, what? He said, yo, J got killed. I said, man, that shit probably ain't even real, man. These motherfuckers just love running with gossip. Because they do. They exaggerate a lot. You know what I mean? Like, turns out he did die. I didn't know what happened. I didn't care. I mean, it's like, oh, shit. I'm dealing with my own pain. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't happy, but... I was not. I was indifferent to it. Yeah, to me, I'm yeah. just being. 100%. I got a toothache, so I can't worry about your headache. Come on now, yeah, you understand yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Man, the next day they start talking, saying that I did it, right? Oh man. 
Now this Jam Master J now. This is Run DMC Jam Master J and they saying you killed him. Look, I've known Jay all my life. He lived right around the corner from me. I went to Catholic school with Run and DMC. Me and Run, Run used to come by my house every day. And we walked to school together. His brother Russell used to sell weed. Run would steal the, the man weed. And me and him roll it up and smoke it. Yeah. I know these people. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yo, I know these people. I'm like, what? Now, there, there had been talk of some, like, you know, head bumping between me and Jay, that had happened seven years prior. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yo, in 1997, Jay set up a meeting with Leo Cohen for me. If I needed Jay to do something, he would do it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But people who don't know like to talk about things all the time. So anyway... That's the most of the talk is from the people who don't know. Who don't know. That's mm. most of the they, chatter in our community. And, and 90% of the time. And, and then on top of that, y'all got y'all gotta realize that I had a past. And because you know I'm not a flashy individual, I'm low-key. As a matter of fact, after I became a suspect in this, the feds went to three penitentiaries to visit. Associates of mine. Now, now this. Oh, this man. Now, now, <laughs> now, now, oh, man. So, so, Yo, so, so, Jay, Jay, murder is after you. You going? You going through the fire? I now. was. So I, like that was shot. the fire. And Ooh. yo, that was the fire. That back to the dream. Okay, okay. I realized at that moment, I was trying to figure out what the fire was. But that was I, it. That was it. That was it. But you know where I drew the strength from? If you want the light to shine on you, you're gonna have to come out of the fire. And knowing that the light was at the end of the tunnel, I started fighting. And boy, I'd be damned. Well, I'm not damned, but if if the light ain't been shining on me ever since, man, listen. How the dream was prophetic, bro. So, so it was not mm. just a. It was not a regular dream. Listen to me. It listen. was a message. You understand listen what I'm saying? Yeah. Now that that that's some fire. Most people can't come out of. Yeah, that's a, that's a major fire. Listen, because and I was broke. Especially the way that y'all getting down down there in New York. So it's look, like well, and then plus the the, the look, name, who it is. They that's what I'm saying. To. Listen, man. At the time, it was a couple things going on. They were offering a $500,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of the person responsible. Simultaneously, they put my name out there. And then on top of that, they was putting money on my head. You understand See, what that, I'm saying? Exactly. Yo, That's so, what I was saying. And so listen. I look, man. Hold on. They didn't pick you up off the street. <laughs> no, so you eat, you can damn to just get out. Look, come on now. Listen. Now, now let, so, let, let, let me so, just say this. So they were, they were hung for it. Look at this incentive. Five hundred thousand leading to the arrest, not the conviction, the, just leading the to the arrest. arrest. Look, man, and conviction, and conviction, the conviction too. They they wanted, you know what I mean? Five hundred to half a million dollars. Niggas would lie on their mama for a half a million dollars, what? bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, look. So and they put my name out there and dangling a reward in all this and. Supposedly, they got people. You walk on the streets. That's all that's going on. Man, I was walking past the newsstand because I'm a. I, you know, we used to read the newspaper back then, not like online. Yeah. And I'm looking at my name on the front page of the paper in New York. My a uh, 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 buddy of mine, he was down in Atlanta from New York too. He called me. He said, "Man, they they saying you did it, man. Yo, you got to get the fuck out of here." And I was like, "Yo, where am I gonna go?" You know when people be talking about running, you can, you need money to run. We gonna do? Go down, visit a, a relative, and, and hide out under the bed or some shit. They want some money. They struggling. Yeah, they yeah, going, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yo, you, you. So what I what I did was I ran right at him. I, I reached out to this attorney, Marvin Kornberg. He was John Gotti's son-in-law, um, lawyer Carmine Agnello. He represented him. He represented Justin Volpe, the cop that put the plunger. And Abner Louima's ass. Ah, yeah, and, 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 and he represented the four cops that shot Amadou Diallo 41 times. So he's a big, he's a big <laughs> name lawyer, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he a big guy. He a big, big name. So I called him, and I'll never forget. Jay got killed on a Wednesday. It was October 30th. 
um, on that Saturday, which was November 2nd, I met with Kornberg. I told him, I ain't got no money. I said, all I need you to do is walk with me to the precinct for questioning. And, and the reason why I was prepared to go lay up and fight it, but I didn't want to go to the precinct without legal representation where they could say smart that man, I smart, said smart, things. Smart man, you never want to do that. You see what I'm saying? There's a reason why they I, say you need an attorney to talk to them. See, yeah. I, I was going to turn myself in, but I needed the lawyer. So anyway, I got with Kornberg and he called the precinct. And he said, listen, I heard you're looking for one of my clients. And um, they said, what's his name? He said, Curtis Schoon. They said, yeah. He said, um, I'm bringing him in on Monday. So if you guys pick him up before then, just remember he got legal representation. Mm. So he took, Monday was November 4th. I, I, I remember those dates, everything well. Monday morning now, I wake up. I was with, a, with my chick. And she was naked, and she was like, yo, you, you, want, you want to hit it? I was like, nah. I was doing push-ups. And, and I was looking at the TV. And what happened was, on the news, the media was outside the precinct. They was waiting for me to come because the police had tipped them off that I was coming in. Because it's a big case, right? Very big case. We you know, all, yeah, you know what case. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that's humongous. Bro, I put on two pairs of socks two pairs of uh, boxers, two T-shirts, my starter kit, because I'm going to Rikers Island, and I got to wait for somebody to bring me some stuff up, and I wanted to have where I could wash out one and change it up. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. This is how I'm thinking. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. See, I'm a man that I embrace what's coming at me. Yeah. I don't be, I don't be buckling and crying. Real life, real life, real you life. You understand what I'm saying? So we get there, and Cornbrook says to me, he says, look, we're not going in no more. I was like, why? What's up? Like, I was like, I'm ready to go. Because I made up my mind. I own the I'm loss. I'm going to take this head on. You understand? Yeah. Right? I always own the loss mm. first. Yeah. And then claim the victory. Yeah. I had owned the loss. So he said, look, man, you see what's going on on TV? Last thing I want is to walk you over there and somebody say, recognize, look at you on TV and say they saw you outside the studio, blah, blah, blah. He called the police and screamed on them. Said, you, you, you shouldn't have done that. Now I'm not bringing them in. And if you want them, you're going to have to charge them. That's what he said. He put the pressure back on him. He put the pressure back on him. Yeah. So I'm sitting in the, in the office with him. And him and the other, the, the other, another Jewish lawyer, they was talking. And they, they grilling me. They're like, come on, man, did you whack him? I told him, I said, why would I do that? How, how could I get water from a rock? So I used that reference on purpose because Moses took his staff and hit the rock and water came forth from it. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. so the Jews being Jews, they looked at each other like, yo, what the fuck is he talking about? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and they just yeah. smiled at each other. So we, yeah, we, we yeah. sat. We, pull one of my moves. Yeah, that was one of my moves. That was. <laughs> Look, so we sat down and the phone rang about an hour after. And, and Colbert said, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. He put the phone down. He said, that's it. You can go. They never had nothing on me. No witnesses. But no if you nothing. go talk, yeah. if you go in and ask a question, they get, yeah. Yeah. They, they knew my back. Look, man, again, I'm not anti-police. I'm not anti-anybody. But my experience in life is that police focus on closing cases, not solving crimes. Facts. And if, if you fit the bill... That's it. That you, you, you fucked. Well, that's what happened with the Central Park Five. Uh, that's what happens, and 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 that's what they call in, in law enforcement kicking the ball down, yeah. down the road. Uh, we make our arrest, we close the case, let them sort it out in court. Case closed. Yeah, twenty years, twenty seven. You see these brothers coming out, spent twenty seven years in prison for something he didn't do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, yeah. you, you know what be tripping me out though? And that's everywhere. The community be be talking about, man, this ain't right. But y'all the ones that sent them to jail. Y'all the ones that took the stand Facts. against them. Facts. Y'all the ones that spread the lies. Facts. Yo, look, look, man. Facts, man. Look, for look, real. Man, I, I felt so bad because I didn't do it. And nobody came to your defense. 
See, that, that was my next question. How, 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 how did the, how did the community reply to you? Look, I was so hot. I was like, fuck the community after that. If nobody stood up for me, I've done things for people. I help people out, man. The very next year, I came back with Playboy magazine, and they did a, a, a 13 page write up. And I brought the journalists right to the community, right in Hollis, put them in the barbershop, and made people talk to his ass. Yeah, if y'all want me to be an animal, I'm going to be an animal now. You understand? Because you got me fighting for my life out here. You know, I carried that cloud for 18 years until they arrested people in 2020. And while I was doing that, I done started a business, employed uh, 20 W-2 workers, 40 contractors, serving a thousand people. I done made films. I done, I done, I done contributed to books that got starred review and publishers weekly. Queens Reign Supreme, produced on TV, American Gangster, became a published journalist. I did all of this shit with a <laughs> cloud over my head. So, so <laughs> that, see, you know, man, see, look, he, he read my mind. Eh, eh, I, yeah. I'm asking these questions in my head. See, this is like a wrongfully convicted nigga. This is like a nigga been in prison, been wrongfully convicted, and he's finally been cleared and freed, and he's not, ang he's not angry, he's not resentful. Mm -hmm. or, or is there any resentment? Or, look, or is there look, any... Uh, what I, I'm a, if I'm going to keep it a buck, I'm not mad at nobody. I don't hate anybody. But I don't fuck with niggas too tough, bro. That hurt, didn't it, man? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, that hurt. Yeah, that hurt. Yeah, that hurt. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that hurt. Yeah, no, no, that hurt. That hurt. But 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 let's no, take it. that hurt, man. But, but I, go, I get you. I let's get go you. back. Let's go back to the to the to the to the beginning of the show. You said after that incident, because of your past, you wanted to work so hard to change how people see you. Yeah, people man. People must have really thought that. Then. They did. They did. Based they, on who you, uh, they, no, not who you were, but what you've look, done. Listen, listen, listen. I, I take ownership for promoting certain um, images, imagery of myself. But it was done not, not. You know, when you are, when you are, when you are a lone wolf like myself. Sometimes, the only thing that keep keep you safe is that you keep people thinking. Damn, I don't know if I should fuck with him right now, man. That, that, that nigga dangerous. Mm, yeah. So, so as a defense mechanism, I promoted a certain image of myself that became obsolete at a certain point because I was no law. It was no longer necessary, but it came back and bit me in the ass, man. You, you know what I mean? But still, I'm telling you, man. There's so much shit that I could talk about. Well, people I did things for. Look, man, I'm gonna give you another story. And I'm, I'm going to say names because I know the police going to be watching this because in 2020, the U.S. attorney reached out to my attorney and offered me immunity to talk to them on the record about the case. They know they done you wrong. I, I felt like they was trying to fuck me again because the only reason they would want to talk to me is because they want me to assassinate Jay's character. They building a case that he was involved with drugs, so they wanted me to verify that the, without the, the street gangster guy with his reputation. They yeah. wanted because the, the original story is me and Jay was involved in a drug deal, and it went bad, and that's why I did that. Seven, well, 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 hey, listen, hold on, listen, 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 listen. Look, listen these are my questions. Damn. Now, because, hey, I, I, as, as I listen Damn. to the case, I'm saying to myself. They want to know well, what's his involvement with Jay. You don't rap. You don't sing. You don't. Yeah, see, why Jay fucking with him? But y'all childhood. But buddy. they they wanted they wanted they want. I, I believe what they wanted was for me to confirm that Jay was a drug dealer because Jay's people, while they were running to the police, they didn't they didn't really stop to think that the police was going to check into his background too because they don't know nothing about the police. The police investigate everybody. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Everybody is a goddamn suspect to yeah. the police. You, know, yeah, what yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So, but they ran to the police and then they had to try to cover it up and clean it up and be like, Jay was just a DJ and this, that, that. I don't know what Jay was doing. If yeah. I did, I wouldn't speak on it anyway. If he was dealing drugs, he damn sure wasn't doing it with me. Yeah, That's the only thing I would say. You understand what I'm saying? But when they came to me with the the... The thing my lawyer said, yo, man, do you want to talk to him? I said, I said, do I have to? He said, no. I said, then fuck him. I'm not. 
Why uh, would uh, I need immunity for something I ain't been involved in? Mm. Yo, you know, the, they want me to go on the record incriminating myself in criminal activity to help them with their case. And this uh, in 2020. Well, yeah, uh, this is in 2020. Now you done did all this work. See, see, listen, that's why I tell that's why I tell these old gangster niggas, man, why they on the internet talking? Yo, I think they all clowns, bro. Why I they do. on the internet talking? I be watching bro? them. I be like, these motherfuckers are stupid. They ain't got nothing going on. Nah, I could only imagine how dumb they was when they was young because they, they old and stupid. These niggas done got away with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo. If man. you done played this part, it's things you done got away with. Come on, bro. Why you on here talking, man? Look, why are we even talking about that? Yo, you listen, man. So, so a, 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 anyway, I, I, I didn't do that. I didn't. I didn't bother with that at all. They got to, they got to deal with their case. And I told my attorney, I said, look, man, those people knew I didn't do this all this time. And they left that cloud hanging over my head, man. Nobody in Jay's family, in his circle, ever said, yo, Scoon didn't do that. It's obvious I didn't do it, man. Look, if they didn't come get me, they had so many different suspects, right? But they left my name out there for, for me to have to answer. For people on social media talking about, man, fuck you, you killed your Master J. <laughs> so, 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 so throughout, through, 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 through all these barriers, obstacles, adversity, and man, even the, the, the threat of death over your life, how do you build these businesses? How, how do you, Look, man, how, how do you mentally, because, because, how do you mentally come out and be positive? And look, block out all that. Look, man, that's 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 look. a lot. And still, you gotta overcome these look, barriers. Look. You still gotta get the money. You still you, gotta. Create yeah. The you said a key word there: adversity. Adversity introduces a man to himself. You don't know who you are till you are confronted with adversity. You may think you somebody, hmm. but when that adversity hits you. You either gonna stand up or you gonna fold like a beach chair. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I stood up. I did. You know, like uh, that dream that I had. That dream is real, but it's not unique to me. Everybody has their fire. They gotta come through. Mm -hmm. You either come through the fire or you succumb to the fire, mm -hmm. and it happens every day, all day, with brothers. You know what I mean? Right. Some of us come through it. It could be anything. It could be a child died, cancer. It could be anything. That's your fire. We all have a fire that we have to come through that's going to test our faith. That just was what it was for me. Mm -hmm. So now, how do I become positive, right? Easy. It really was. I understood that. I, before this happened, I knew that the way I was living was wrong anyway. Yeah. I was in the process of transforming anyway. But what that, what that did for me was it slammed the door shut because I understood that now I'm not just a regular individual. If I was to go back, backtrack, and somebody get arrested, they could easily say, so and so and so and so, and he did this, and he told me this. I'm somebody's get out of jail card now. Yeah. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Talk, <laughs> And I, and I understood that. So, it, 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 yo, man, even though I had no intentions of going back, that shit slammed the door shut for me. There was no more streets for me after that. That's a scary thought. Mm. What? At any moment. All they had to Snatch do was just say. Yo, look. That's a scary motherfucking yo, thought. Look, 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 man. Listen, bro. I, I, um, the, the only thing that I really regret, right, because I, I believe a lot of what I went through, I, I did contribute to, to the situation. Yeah. Not by being involved with, with that situation, but just in the way I lived my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the only thing that I, that I do have some regrets about, and I'm a man that don't regret much, man, but yeah. my, my sister, my closest sibling, she was one year younger than me. Her birthday was a day before me. She tried to hold me down so tight, man. Man, and she she uh she died of a brain aneurysm in 2004. Yeah. And I know worrying about me didn't help her situation none. So that's the only thing. Well, sometimes mm. I think, but I try not to get mad about that shit, though. You know, because 
I got a lot of reasons to be mad with certain people. But I just say, man, you know what? It is what it is, man. It's all you can do, man. It, it is, is what it that, is. That, that, that's and, a, and I'm in a better place. You dig what I'm saying? But that that part, that man, listen, I used to go to my sister's grave every month for over 10 years, man. Hmm. Carrying that guilt, man. Damn, I don't wear his sister into this grave. Yeah. Because of this shit. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So that's, that's what them fools did. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get that. And and that's and, and and that's what I, that's where that anger comes from. That's where you just you say, do you hold do you hold anybody accountable? I do. You hold the community, homie. The people that didn't even come up to say not one, not run, not DMC, none of them. Like come up to say nobody no. in Jay's family ever apologized to me. They was blaming Randy Allen. It was just like I was roadkill on the side of the road. They moved on to other suspects and never even doubled back to be like, yo, man. I'm sorry, big dog, man. Nobody. Man. Nobody. Because, because, because with these guys, they got evidence, proof. They, look, they, look, man, the they made documentaries. Jay's people are always on a goddamn documentary talking. Why are y'all niggas making documentaries and naming streets after this man? Go find his killers. You, you heard what I said? When my man Juan Melendez got killed, what we did. Yeah. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? All J people ever did was get on documentaries, uh, have fucking parties in his <laughs> honor. Try look, there's 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 a there's a slimy, slimy Steve LaBelle. Right? He he's he's the white dude out of flushing. He got on the J bandwagon. Uh, he connected. He used he used his association with Run DMC to get a job at Relativity Records, and most people don't know at Relativity they were distributing um, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would go up to Relativity like damn near two, like a year and a half after their album came out. These dudes were selling eighty five thousand copies a week. Still, a year and a half after. Relativity made a lot of money off of Bone Thugs and Harmony, right? Steve ended up being their manager. He used that to get close to Nipsey Hussle, to infiltrate with the... Uh, I with, met him at the funeral. Who, you met Steve? Yeah. Scumbag. Steve, if you're watching, I know what you did, bro. So and anyway, he, he, he got close with all them L.A. dudes and all. They don't even know who they fucking with, man. I met him at the funeral. That's, yeah, yeah, we walked in the funeral with him. Look, they don't even know who they who they fucking with, man. This dude, that they had a Jam Master J weed strain. <laughs> he, all he got his idea is how to monetize black folk. Marry Sean Kingston's mother. Like, this is a bottom-feeding white boy here, bro. Good God almighty. Marry Sean Kingston's mother? Yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah. He'll do anything for a dollar. He's the epitome, the personification of a blood sucker. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? A leech. Yeah. yeah. And and he told he told this other dude, they did a documentary. And he got the he helped put it together. And I told the dude, Andrew, his name is Andrew something. I'm gonna call his goddamn name up. He, Jewish cat, because Steve's Jewish too. You know what I mean? And they were talking to me, they wanted me to be in the documentary. And I'm like, yo, I'm a filmmaker, man. I've got credits and all that. Y'all want me in the film? Put me on the payroll. See, they always want us to do shit for free. Yep. They don't never want to pay us. Collaboration. No, pay yeah, me, motherfucker. Yeah. Fuck collaboration. <laughs> All content is so good, but they never want to pay us. So Steve is telling, telling Andrew to get at me, and they got this dude, Dave Seabrooks. And they, they got on a they got Dave on the camera talking about me and Jay selling drugs and all this shit, man. Jay is Sammy the Bull Gravano's uh, son-in-law. And, and I knew it, man. And you know when they were doing this shit, man? I was back in Coleman Young in in Detroit in his run for uh, Congress. Mm -hmm. He ran for mayor in 2017. I was his number one backer then. 
And uh, he ran for Congress in 2018. Now he's a councilman at large. And I backed him every step of the way, making, making campaign commercials and everything for him. And they put this story out about me selling drugs that had nothing mm. to do with Jay. While I was in the middle of all of that, and I'm talking to the Jew guy, the, the producer, and I'm like, look, man, I could give you some insight. You could bounce shit off for of me, man, but I can't get on camera because this is what I'm doing. Here he is, Andrew Siegman. This is the last message I sent them. What did it say? When this case is over, you better get lawyered up. Damn right. I don't fuck with these people, man. Fuck hip hop. Fuck all these fake ass gangsters. Motherfuckers is trampling on us. All these people doing is being minstrels and motherfucking sambos trying to get money. You put a camera in front of them, they'll say anything and do anything and be co-conspirators in tearing other black people down for money. And, and even I up to get a nigga killed. Yeah, mm. you nigga killed. So you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Andrew Siegman, that's his name. And Steve LaBelle was feeding him information. And I'm, I'm trying to do good, get a brand man elected and all that. They put this documentary out talking about I was buying drugs in California and all this. First of all, even if it's true, it got nothing to do with this man's life. Why are you fucking with me like that? See, when you people fuck with me, man, it means I'm going to fuck with you. And you ain't going to like it because I don't just do it. I overdo it. I don't know when to stop. Never yeah, that's did. how I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you don't, once you fuck with me, you don't get to decide when it's over. That's right. No. Nah, <laughs> he said I overdo it. You don't Look. get to decide how far we taking this. Yeah, no, man. No. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 yo, man, the reason why I sent him that because my goddaughter's mother, she, I, that was a screenshot I sent to him. Yeah. She, my, my goddaughter, she was like nine years old when she was watching that, her family, her mother's family. And she was like, that's not my godfather. My godfather's nice. He does, he does, he does. These people, they will malign you, man, and walk away like it's nothing. Like hmm. it's fucking nothing. So Steve LaBelle, fuck you. Keep picking up bottom of the barrel black women, trying to ingratiate yourself to the black community. You ain't nothing but a a, a goddamn uh, what Farrakhan call him a blood sucking leech. <laughs> so, so so how so how how you get involved with the American gangster movie? Oh uh, well, you know one of my things is not the movie that was the series. One of my things the the, the B T American gangster. Yeah series. yeah I produced. I produced the Jamaican Child Posse episode. I co-produced the Supreme McGriff episode. And mm. I, I was a consultant, really a producer, but I didn't get the credit for producing on the Fat Cat Nichols episode. So I worked with them three three years straight. And each year, they increased my role because I made things happen for them. You know, and um, one, one of my things is that, yo, a blessing and a curse are one and the same, the difference being in the application, right? So well, that's I, how Vlad TV did, was took y'all concept. Well, I, I got Vlad. T, I got Vlad his first, um, his first television production credit. See, that's all he did. Was oh he yeah, yeah. The, it was about the romper room, and um, he he threw Cavario from Don Diva. He put Vlad on. The, I never met Vlad or whatever, but I'm a, always a person, right? I, I always believe in doing things for people. You know, the best way to receive is to give. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a giving person in that respect, you know, because I, I lead by example. So he put he put Vlad on the phone, and Vlad wanted to get the romper room by Matt Dre and him and all that. So I made the connection for Vlad. Never met him, never knew him. You know, years later, I would reach out to Vlad because he was airing videos first before he started doing all this street shit, you know, music videos. And I had somebody who had... um. We had some music. I was like, yo, could you get them some, some play? And he said it wasn't like up to his standards and something like that. Nigga, I got you a TV production credit. Didn't know you from nowhere. And the video, it was up to the standards. But uh, what I learned is a lot of these people don't own their platform. They won't tell you that, though. 
they'll make excuses of why they, they won't do something or can't do something. Mm-hmm. But I just felt like, yo, I felt... That's what started breaking my heart about black people. When I started Because they don't own out, shit. They don't own nothing. They'll make excuses right yeah. there now, man. Either, either now, nah, homie, I can't, I don't, I got to go over here. This really heals. Yeah. That's what started breaking my heart. No, yeah. real talk. That's how, I felt, that's how I found my man them here, man. I came here looking for another black man. Thinking he owned this after being rejected by a Jewish woman is real powerful around here, right? Yeah. Uh, my heart was broken. I ain't know where to go. So I came here looking for another black man. And so this black man said, no, nah, I own it. No, nah, you ain't on it. Now the other dude, he said, no, nah, I, I own it. Man, that nigga told me he owned this. Look, <laughs> man, that break your heart so much, man. Like, yo, I love black people, man. I love them too, man. I love them. I, 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 I try not to rely <laughs> on black people too much. You know what I mean? Because of that, because I don't want them to break my heart over and over where I start yeah. not liking them. Right. I want to stay loving them. Yeah. You know, so I don't put them in a position to disappoint me. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? But Vlad, he's not black and he's just like Steve LaBelle. Yeah. He got a black wife, you know, he, he worked in the room, man. He used Lord Jamar and all of them. And I, look, man, Vlad has asked me to be on his show. I would never go on his show because of my personal experience with him. I don't have anything against, I wouldn't tell anybody else not to go there. But if I get you your very first TV production credit, and all I asked you to do was to play a video, and you gave me an excuse. I just think you're a piece of shit, man. Well, Vlad, you ever gave me by me? I'm like, explain this shit here, motherfucker. Yeah, Vlad, you Vlad, put me back. I'm going to make you explain this shit, look, Vlad. Look, look, look. <laughs> motherfuckers told me Vlad don't even be in the studio. You be talking to a screen. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Now, 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 listen. See, now, 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 check this out, right? When I told you I would do your show, what I told you. I'm coming to you. Yeah, because this is what men do. Men sit down and say what they have to say and stand on it face to face. And you know what? You know what I liked about Charleston? Charleston go everywhere by himself. You know who else do that? Me. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Yo, right. real talk. Yo, man, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to go down to Texas. I've never been to Dallas before. Never in my life. That way. Never. I came yeah. down here just to see this man that's face what's to up. face by myself. Yeah, that's what he said. Nah, that's what's you up. You understand what I'm saying? Like, nah, look, real talk. Real, yo, man. Yeah, you ran into a real one, Jack. Yeah, man. That's how it go. And especially when I see Charleston getting into it with the Queens Flip crew over there in New York. I said, man, he ain't running to the right New York dudes, man. Yeah, I, I got to go straight that mess yeah, out. Nah, <laughs> them, them niggas are, man, because uh, if people watch me document that trip, and, and man, I was so happy. Yeah, yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah, man, we talked watch, about it. If you watched me going before I got the Queen Flip, nigga, I was so happy because I had never been to New York City. Nigga, I'm finna walk the streets of New York. I'm finna go to Harlem. Man, when, when I got there, nigga, man, didn't nobody even talk to me. The niggas that booked me there, I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't even know what Queen Flip them was. How I'm gonna get my weed? They say the show ain't till 10 30 at night. Nigga, I'm in New York at 9 o'clock in the morning. What I'm going to do from 9 a.m. And then they got me in Chinatown. I'm staying in Chinatown. Oh, Lord. That's where you saw the Popeyes with the Chinatown. Yeah, (laughs) man. So I ain't never in my life, homie, been nowhere in America where everything was rolling Chinese. You know what I'm saying, man? Shit. But I'm happy to be in New York. So as the day progressed, but shit, man, let me, where's some soul food? I think they told me somewhere like Junior's. So I went to, a, I think Junior's in Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, Atlantic Ave. Yeah. Flatbush, Flatbush. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, man, I was just walking around, homie. And so then that's when I found out everybody who looked black ain't black. Oh, man. And then I found out you can't talk to people in New York. You'll get hurt. Everybody is a motherfucker. What? No, no, I'm just trying to get some weed. <laughs> Motherfucker, you're right in your eyes. Motherfucker, you're right in your eyes and not say nothing. Man, I didn't want to weed, man. So, uh, so when I got the Queen's Flip, uh, it was an eerie feeling. I said, man, what these niggas got? And, and they vibe. They weren't talking to me. It wasn't no, hey, brother, what's up? Uh, it, it, it wasn't welcome. So uh, as the show went on, if you go back and watch that show, you can see where I realized, oh, no, man, these niggas got me up here to make a mark. You can see where I, I flipped because I realized, oh, no, I don't know what these niggas doing. Yeah, I, 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 I was just keeping a buck. You know, when I, I saw, I don't watch a lot of people's stuff, right? Because I do my own stuff. Because we got to talk about school TV, too. Yeah, yeah we ain't doing that. Yeah, no, 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 I'm here with you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm here with you. Like look, 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 look. But um, what I saw, right, at the end of the day, I saw that you was by yourself. And you was far from home. Yeah. And I saw that you didn't hold back. 
And despite anything else, that stood out to me. Facts. Because when a lot of people, man, you know, there's, there's this thing my mom say, when your hand in the lion mouth, you got to ease it out. You wasn't easing it out that day, bro. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, yo, who is this dude, man? Like, what's up with him? Like, yo, and 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 I think Queens flipping them. They like comedians or internet comedians. Yeah, they they so. not like street dudes yeah. or nothing like that. But still, though. I don't know who these niggas are. Yeah, but yeah. still, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, it, it don't take much for somebody to be get out of character and pretend to be something. That and they then, then, you know what I'm and saying? Then, like, yo. And then all I can think, man, these niggas know what hotel I'm staying in. They, they know, know everything. Know, they know. Man, I'm just vulnerable out here. Man, I said, man, I don't, because it wasn't welcoming. So I said, man, why would. So that feeling, homie, of black people. Doing a nigga like this, homie. I, 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 yeah, it, 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 it happens. Bro. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it so, does. so, so, peep game. So, as I'm flying back from New York to Texas, they done made a video to make it look like I done said, fuck, man. So, nigga, when I get home, I got all kind of Puerto Rican motherfuckers from New York. <laughs> so, I'm talking about all type of motherfuckers telling me. So, that's where the, man, nigga, fuck you, New York motherfucker. Now my feelings hurt, homie. Yeah. I come up there to show love, nigga. Y'all, nah, man, that, that fucked me up, homie. I, I, you know, and, and that's another thing, right? Like, we were talking about Pac earlier and, and uh, being a divisive force in the black community, right? Um, I'm from New York, man, but I don't really talk that New York, New York, all that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm, I don't, I'm not mad at people who do, but I think when people talk about where they from, it's because they don't have any individual accomplishments of their own to talk about so they take credit for everybody else's work. Mm, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Like, exactly. yeah, yeah, you know, like you could say you from, you from Brooklyn or you from this rough hood, but did you run that hood though? Like, yeah. like, I, I, I exactly. You know what I mean? Like, did you run that hood, yeah, man? Yeah, if you didn't run it, yeah, I don't know why you talking about it like that. And yeah. that, that's whether you from LA or wherever, like, yeah. if you just another face in the crowd, like, man, you shouldn't be flying that banner that hard like that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, for me, like, not that I ran, I'm not saying I ran anything, but if you go back to my hood, where I was in the 80s, there's kids there that were born after I left that know who I am. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, look. Yeah, I, and thanks, this, man. This, this is on everything I love. When I man, first went that's down that's so there, real. <laughs> when I went down to Atlanta, when I went down to Atlanta after I left New York with the J thing, I was in the barber shop getting my hair cut. And there was a barber from Queens, from New York. I didn't know who he was. Matter of fact, his name is I Real in Atlanta. And it, this was a funny experience because he said, uh, I do another barber from New York was cutting my hair. He said from Brooklyn, and he said, "Yo, he from Queens." So he called him over and he said, "Yo, you from Queens?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "What well, part?" I said, "Hollis." He said, "I'm from Hollis." I said, "Oh yeah." I said, "Who you know in Hollis?" You know the man said my name, but he was talking to me. Boy, I done, I done seen it. I done <laughs> seen it. I done seen it. I done seen it. They do his brother ah, like that. I swear to God, they, they I do, see it. They do that nigga brother. They do Dewberry brother like yo, that. Yo, I see it yo, all yo, the time. Yo, and I look yo, at that nigga like. Yo, they do Dewberry like that. They, listen, nigga told me the other day. Yeah, man, uh, uh, Dewberry, Dewberry, Dewberry got a metal plate in this. They say Dewberry hand metal. That's why he be knocking everybody out. Oh, okay. That's just about Dewberry. Yo, they say, you know what I'm saying? And then Dewberry got Say. Yo, look, man, the dude was talking Boy. to me and mentioned my name. I was like, oh, you know him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, true story. But, yeah. but again, man, for us as black men, right, there's going to be some differences. I spent a lot of time in the South. I went, I went to Virginia first. I was in Newport Beach because I went to Hampton. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Atlanta in 89. I left Atlanta in 95. Came back to Atlanta in 2002 after Jay. I, you know... To me, I've been in Baltimore, D.C. I'm in D.C. now. I get much love in D.C. Okay, right? okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say I'm strong in D.C., but I'm comfortable in D.C. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm comfortable yeah. in D.C. Yeah, right? yeah, so and, D.C., what's up with yeah, it, man? Yeah, yeah. we're going to find out in D.C., man. Yeah, man, yeah. Oh, yeah you, you know, but what, 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 what it is is that, right, we got to get past the juvenile approach of dealing with each other. Facts. Like, I, I'm beyond, like, you from the South, you hmm. from Cali, 
Man. You know, from here. <laughs> All I want is real warriors, and I don't care where they mm, from. Bro. Man, you understand what I'm saying? That's it. Man, tell you know, it to them, man. All, all I want is real warriors. I don't want no suckers. I don't care where the suckers is from. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been, I've been traveling out of New York forever, and I've never met a cat from New York out of town that I clicked with, mm. because if I didn't know you back home, I don't. I don't, I don't know your pe your pedigree. I don't know what you're about. Now, if I know you from back home and I see you out of town, that's a different story. Yeah. But I don't know how you move. New York's a big city, bro. Eight million people. It's a bunch of people, man. Eight million. Just because they from New York, I don't know what that means. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's rough around the edges. Look. <laughs> it's, 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 it's rough. It's rough around the edges in New York. Look, man. Yeah. Listen, let me let me just tell you, man. And, 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 so I understand, you know what I mean? But I, I, I just feel like as black men, men, not boys, men, we got to get past all the differences. We have to accentuate the things that we have in common. And more importantly, Charleston White may not do things that I would do. I may not do things that Charleston White would do. But what we have to do is find out where there's some commonality mm -hmm. and not worry about the differences. Yeah. You Facts, understand man. what I'm saying? Facts. We have to find Facts. that commonality and get shit done. Yeah. Because look, man. We losing out here don't as a ask, people. Don't ask me about my God when we need to be helping the kids. Don't, Come on, don't, man. That ain't you got know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 exactly. Don't exactly. ask me about my neighborhood, nigga. We just trying to help these babies. That, look, man, and, and we not going to worry about none of that other yeah. shit. We're going to get the mission done because ain't nobody doing nothing, man. But not enough because we losing all these token representat representatives we get elected to office. It, I mean, you turn on the TV and you see black people, and you know they talk about black excellence, but they spend most of their time in white spaces. Hmm. You know what I mean? And again, our children, our children don't get to see these black yo, faces. Yo, look, man. Our children don't see black football look, players, black politicians. All these people that we get to see on TV, our children never get to see. Them. Listen, right. listen, brother. I got behind Coleman. We started a, a, a educational foundation in Detroit teaching STEM. We're partnered with Detroit Public Schools. We're in the process right now of building a lab in one of the top schools because they didn't have a lab in the school. Because we're getting the money. This is the stuff that I'm doing, yeah. right? This is what I'm doing. Thanks, man. You understand Work. what I'm saying? Work. He, Work. He, 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 he building... He, he, he creating dreams for children with elevators. In look, look, bro. We all can't be activists. We all can't be uh, TikTok influencers. Thanks, man. We all can't yo, be rappers. We all, we, yo, yeah. listen, man. The world, AI, automation, all that. Even with cybersecurity for the ones who can't really do that high-level stuff, they can do, become cybersecurity experts without going to college. There's about over 2 million cybersecurity jobs needed. Do you know why? Because it's a... Um, you can't be a foreigner and, and and do cybersecurity. It's a national security risk. So if you are a black American and you're a young man, young woman, and you are adept with computers and technology, that may be something you want to get into. You could you don't have to go to college. Everybody don't have to get into cryptocurrency. Do y'all really mean it? No, he just get yeah, 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 yes. Nah, nah. Look, because that what you just said, see, I ain't know nothing about that, look, but you know. Look, man, these kids, man. I, you know, like I I'm, I'm worried about the kids because their parents is in the club. You understand Every what night. I'm saying? Every night. Yo, so Somebody, somebody got to show them something so they could break the cycle. Because if they know better, they'll do better. You know what I mean? And I don't have time to debate with grown people or people who think they grown and know. No, nah, man. My, my whole thing is this, right? <laughs> Whatever you do, if it's working for you. Man, keep doing it. Keep doing it. But if it ain't working for you, you cannot be resistant to change. You cannot. You have to, you have to understand it. Look, man. The shit that I'm doing ain't working. You and I both agree that when we down, we try to figure out what we doing wrong. Yeah. 
Not enough of us do that. Yeah. We keep doing what we've been doing. You know, they said that's the definition of madness. For real. To do the same thing over and over expect and expect a different you know. outcome. Facts. You know what I mean? Like, so, look, man, these kids, man, and, and, and our black kids are, are, are lagging behind. We in Detroit, you, most of the kids, not most, but a large percentage of the kids who benefit from what we're doing, they're Latinos in the Southwest. I mean, uh, do you know why? They taking advantage. The foreigners with the values in the household are taking education. Advantage. Mm. Get that. Do that. Yo, we we have to start, we have to change our values. You know, we used to have great traditional values as a people. And integration, all it did was integration to me is code for assimilation. And what did we assimilate into? We didn't assimilate just into whiteness. We assimilated into liberal whiteness, which is a lot of feminism, LGBTQism, and a whole lot of stuff that it's wreaking havoc on them too, but they have the resources to recover from it. We don't. You see, when they get on drugs, they go to the rehab and they get straightened up. And guess what else that they got? They got us. They can always get a job mentoring us, being mm. our counselors, mm -hmm. yo, being our teachers. Yo, when, when, when you can't make it in the white world, there's always the niggas. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? You can you be, go down there and work with them niggas. And be, listen, man, white privilege is getting the benefit of doubt, especially from black people. And being black is getting nothing but mm -hmm. doubt especially from black people. You see, what that means is a, 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 a average Rudy Pooh ass white man could pop up in a black community and play tough. Be the savior. He will get the kind of trust and respect they love him. to him. They love him. And you or I would have to fight for. Listen to all the stuff that I'm telling y'all that I'm doing. I'm not looking for a power. I had to back. fight. I ain't lying. I had niggas coming up. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Right look, here in this look, city. Look, look, man. I'm educating the kids. I'm trying to run black candidates. I'm making black films. I made black, white, and blue. I'm making a boxing documentary right now. All of this stuff I'm doing myself. The stuff that everybody likes to get in front of the camera. We need to tell our we own stories. We're trying to do it. We, you heard yeah. it? We got somebody yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I am doing it, right? And he ain't yeah. begging for y'all money. And I ain't asking nobody for nothing. Man. Where, where the fuck are y'all? Y'all talking about you the nigga that killed Jam Master J. You understand what I'm saying? That's like, how you see it. Yo, bro. That's why I tell you, man, sometimes I'll be like, I ain't really fucking with niggas. You like mean, that. yeah, that mean, that's why I be saying, man. Yo, look, man. That's why I be expressing that shit, man. Yo, man. Everything I do is to help black people. That was not always the case in my life. But for the for the better part, part of the last 15 years, 17 years, that has absolutely been the case in my life. I mean, tangibles, man. Not just, you know, encouraging words. Tangible. Giving them jobs. Yo, man, there was, a, there was a young lady, I won't say her name. She she got her first job with me out of college. She graduated from Penn State. I used to tease about Sandusky all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, she bought her first house with me. She was not the only one. I've helped young black women buy their first homes, give them their first jobs, all of that. There was another black woman before she worked for me. She had applied to the FBI and they denied her. She talked to me about it. She wanted to write an appeal letter because they said, you know, I could write. I said, I'll write it for you. I wrote her appeal letter. She's my employee now, right? Yeah. I write her appeal letter. You know where she's working right now? The FBI. The FBI, bro. So I'm not perfect. No, I'm not that. I, I'm, I'm not on the Forbes list. Far from it. But I wake up every day, man, thinking about how I can make a difference in our community. And I don't I don't have anything against anybody else. Because for the white people watching, it's like this. There's so much complaints about what to do with the Negro, the black person. This has been the case since the emancipation. By helping them, 
I feel like I'm helping America. Because race... Right now, we're a tax burden. Yo, right now, Ameri listen. America's black people is one of the biggest tax burdens. Uh, listen. Because we we want the entitlements. We look for them. We, we, we pass them down to our kids. Uh, if we on food stamp, we tell our kids, hey, now you know you can get you some food stamp, right? Three generations of the projects? Three, three. so, 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 <laughs> so, so at, 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 at some point, this is why there's such resentment toward us. There's a lot of resentment toward us from a lot. everybody because they feel like we a liability and not an asset. Yeah, yeah they don't, they, yeah. Oh, nah, real tough. Yeah, that's it real right tough. there, man. That's it right there, man. Yeah, man, real in, tough. In actuality, even though we're, even though we consume, we spend our money, we liability. Yo, look, man. Simple-minded people think that people don't like us because of our melanin hmm. and all this. <laughs> they don't like us because they think we're coming to take from them, and we don't even really understand it. Just because they white don't mean they have yeah. a lot of them in the same boat we in. So they, they like, can't get a bank loan either. They, right. they, they like, yo, man, what, what you coming to take? The little bit I got, shit me. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I'm not negating reparations or none of that. Look, man, if that's the hill you want to die on, knock yourself out. I'm trying to help these kids, man. Yeah. One thing Real I talk. One, one thing, Our kids don't want no reparations. Real talk. They don't they know what it is. They want some opportunities. They, they want some alternatives to what's now. They need directions, too, though. Because in, in order to under, appreciate the opportunities, they need the directions. They do. Yeah. And, and, and that goes back to the home value system. The, the home, man. We, yeah, LeBron goes. James can't save everybody. Jay-Z can't save everybody. Yeah. I don't know if they're saving anybody, to be honest with you. But, the, you know, they say LeBron opened a school. White folks run it. Come on, man. He's a white folks. He ain't got yeah, no black dean. It's a, it's a city school. Yeah. It's a city school. He did give up $2 million, which is $2 million more than I gave. But at the end of the day, he doesn't have any say-so in the curriculum or anything. They can be... The hire, the fire, or nothing. He's just a name in the face. And the, like we always, and, the, and, and the donor. Well, he paid for that with his $2 million. Yeah. He got some good publicity. But it's still, I mean, I'm not knocking him. But let's be honest about what's going on. This celebrity worship shit got to stop, too. Idol worshiping. It's hmm. idolatry all day, every day. See, we 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 in a we in a the position we in, cause we as a people have strayed from righteousness. All of this stuff, idolatry, money worshiping, all of this stuff, man. Look, man, I just saw where over the weekend, two rappers got killed. One name was FBG Cash, the other one name was Money Gang Vontae. So notice the one name is Money Gang. The old one name is FBG Cash. Now, condolences to the families, no disrespect to anybody. But this obsession we have with materialism, the money, it is not doing us any good. Yo, money in of itself is an illusory concept. It's only valuable because everyone agrees that it's valuable. It's just paper, man. Yes, they, they call it fiat currency. Now, it's, it's valuable paper only because the other person is willing to accept it as value. Facts. But if they don't, and see, and people think like with the crypto, that they, they circumvent that, it's all the same thing. And you know what? And when I gave it thought, it was like that with gold too. Gold is just a standard of value that's universally accepted. It's a, it's it's a, a rock. It's a rock. It's, it's a, a rock. Yeah. Yo, it's, a, exactly. it's an earth resource that so, you give value to. So so it went from the gold to the paper to now the crypto, but it's all the same thing. It's a universally accepted standard of value. That's it. That is it. And so you can pull the rug from under that at any given moment. You know what I mean? So, and, and, and my point in all of that is this. We can't worship money, man, because money is an illusory concept. It's one that we all buy into for now. But who knows? You know what I mean? Like, if there's an ELE extinction level event, nobody's going to care about I got blocks of cash that I can hold up to my head well, like a phone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, can, you, you, you can have all the gold in the world when you need seasoning. Come on, man. Come on. Back, but, back in the day, when you, you need water. 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 When you yeah. need water. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? Let, let's seeds. Go you, got, you, you got gold, but you need seeds. Come on now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, again, that goes back to the valuation system. We have been taught.
to indulge in consumerism and, and, and through material worship. And these celebrities, this is what they promote because their value to the system is to get us to be consumers. And before I shift real quick in the mental health business, they call them mental health patients consumers. And I never understood why. Because I used to write the notes and they'd be designated consumers. Uh, Dr. Joel Gans, an old, old Jewish doctor out of Brooklyn, he was our first doctor, born in 1935. He, he told me he, he, used to, he was mad about it because, of course, he was old school. See, new people are more accepting to these kind of changes. Oh, well, but, that's, that's, that's what makes terms and terminologies and these new diagnoses so, so dangerous because yep. the new doctor, the, 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 mm -hmm. the new mind is more accepting of anything that the power to it be. It conforms. Yeah. It conforms. So he said they're not consumers, they're patients because he's a doctor. He writes scripts. So I was always wondering why are they called consumers. At first, I thought it was to remove the stigma of the mental yeah, health patients. designation. Yeah, patients. Yeah. But yeah. that's not it. It's not just the, the patients that are called consumers. All of us are called consumers because we don't produce. Are you a producer or you a consumer? And most of us are nothing but consumers. Even producers consume, but consumers don't produce. My okay? My you know, fur, my fur. Hold on. Consumers produce more consumers. That's what they do. But go ahead, Charleston. This is me and my first, my first semester in college. Yeah. The teacher had on the, on the board, we was doing government, U.S. government. And it says, he wrote on the board, consumerism. Consumerism has trumped citizenship. We are no longer citizens in this country anymore. If you listen to the news, <laughs> we're referred to as the American consumers. The right. American consumers. That, yeah. Our government created a, 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 a fair crediting consumer act no, bro. and classified us as consumers. That's when I realized it wasn't just a mental health thing. Yeah. There's a classification for people. Yeah. You yeah. are a consumer because that's all you do. You yeah. consume. So the world identifies us, the American yeah. consumers. Because what do America do? It consumes products from all over the world. We, we don't, don't manufacture. Come on. No, no, not, no gross domestic so, products. Nothing so it's not, it's not a black thing. It's not a white thing. It's not a mental health thing. It's, it's that, that's our designation now. Yeah. We yeah. are consumers. Uh, well, the world will eat off of us now. Come on now. The world will eat off America's ass now. Everything they send us, we gotta wait for. That's why our shells. We are. gotta wait for it. Uh, uh, we we, we don't gotta wait anything. Mm -hmm. We that, gotta wait. We don't have any jobs here. Everybody is eating off of because we're not citizens. We're consumers. Terrible, bro. America don't have no interest in its in, in its consumers as it should have in its citizens. Mm -hmm. You let capitalism dictate what consumers get. Look, we just connected the dots right here, bro. You understand? From the mental health to the oh. American consumers. I didn't even think about that part of it. But I knew they was talking about all of us. You know, right. it wasn't just mental health, bro. Why would they, a patient, a consumer? Consumer. That's why now when you go to the doctor, you get bills from the hospital. I don't even know where them bills be coming from. The nurse, the, you get four different <laughs> bills from one hospital visit from three or four different entities. You're a consumer. And don't ride the ambulance. Oh, bro. Whoa. Whoa. So that might be what, 1500 Yeah, yeah, see, that's, yeah, yeah. 15000 Oh. <laughs> so, so, so let's, 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 let's switch real quick. We got, go about, we got about 10 minutes before the show. Okay, go uh, ahead. Schoon TV, where, where the idea or concept come from? All right. Um, on, on January 8th, Trump was kicked off of Twitter. So what I did was... 20, what was that, 2019? Yeah, 2020. 2020, okay. January, January 8th, two days after January 6th, they kicked him off Twitter. And I was like, damn, whether you agree with Trump, like him, whatever, man, he's the president. They didn't violate Trump to me. They violated the office of the presidency. They were showing us that the president really... Ain't shit. 
ain't shit, bro. Big that's tech how, is. That's how I. That's how I looked at it. Mm-hmm. I was like, who the fuck is these flunkies to be canceling him? That's you know crazy. what I mean? Like, yo, that's yo, crazy. Yo, that's how I interpreted it, and it's not because I love Trump. You know what I mean? It's because yo, it just is what it is, man. Yeah. He re- he was in that office. They violated the the office of the presidency. So I felt like, damn, if they could do that to him, they could do that to me. And I had a lot, I, I always got controversial views. Anybody who's been listening for the last two hours know that I'm going to say what I got to say. So I decided I needed to set up my own platform before they canceled me. And I got my my brother. He, he graduated from Harvard Business School, but he was a dual finance and, and computer um, science major. Yeah. He built out my, my, my server for me. SchoolTV.com is on his own server. Um, I'm in the process of getting an app developed. It's a news aggregator site with with exclusive articles and content that wouldn't get published anywhere else in my town hall section. Views from the left, right, and center because I don't discriminate. I don't dictate to people. You could be a liberal. I'm not a liberal. I don't even, I don't even see myself as a Republican. I think I'm socially conservative, but really politically I'm independent. I want to deal with who is going to help me. Benefits, it, quid you know, quo pro. It, it, Politics it, is quid quo pro at it, the end it, of the day. In Detroit, Coleman is a staunch progressive. I am not. But everybody in Detroit is a Democrat, so you got to work with what's there. You understand? Yeah. And not only that, he's a good guy who cares about the people. Yeah. So, again, accentuating the things we have in common. Yeah. And not worrying about the differences. See, I practice what I preach, bro. Right. I ain't just telling people to do stuff. So anyway, I, 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 I write articles. I have writers. I pay journalists. Um, I interview people. I have paywall content behind the paywall. I got a I got a Africa correspondent, a Zulu from South Africa, Google Lethu Hughes. I just sent him a bunch of camera equipment. He's going to be filming a docu-series called Apartheid Lives that's going to be exclusively Mm. on my site. You know what I mean? And he's giving us, he's driving a lot of traffic from Africa to my site. My site is an international site. I focus, I know, I I try not to do the celebrity stuff unless it's some kind of political relevance that's going on. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a blog, it's not a gossip, I'm not, I'm not knocking those things. People deal with what they can deal with. You understand what I'm saying? My shoulders are a little broad, so I deal with heavier things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, And that's okay. But I get traffic from over 80 countries around the world. I look at my analytics. And people all over the world log on to school TV. Not a lot of people in these countries. It might be five to ten in each country. But just to see people in these countries. Tuning in. Tuning in. Yeah, no, man. Uh. And, and, and not even English-speaking countries. I'm talking about China, Japan, India, Russia, Turkey, Iceland. I've, right. seen, I've, mm. seen, I've seen them all. Yeah, I'm trying to mm. get on that server, yo. Yo. Yeah, yeah because. Uh, yeah, that's big. Um, it's big. It, 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 this is what's going to happen to black people. We, we don't have diaries. We don't have journals. Uh, we don't do our family tree. Uh, we don't do our family tree lineage and was, was wrote down in the book. Mm-hmm. We're putting all of our pictures on Facebook, YouTube. And, and they own it. They can snap their fingers and erase you. And you and never they, exist and they, the, and they own the rights to it too. They own the rights to it. Yeah, they but, own the but rights they to once, it. But see, you just think you got a social media page for twenty years. You've been putting all your family pictures on there. You ain't been taking pictures in real life. Yeah. And they take your account. They can erase you, man. They can they can erase you, because everybody is bringing everything here. Yeah. We're not taking family photos no more. We're putting them on the wall. Yeah, we're we all doing exactly. family selfies. Exactly. Look, and, we, and we keep and them we're here. And we're their server. See, my, my, my thing is this, right? Uh, I just wanted a place where we can say the things we want to say. Google Leithu says things about the South African government and Nelson Mandela that no mainstream publication would publish. Because he's not... He's not Cooling. Uh he's telling the truth about Mandela. He left the, we, he left the we, country in the worst state. Yo, yo, Google Leitu is a South African living in South Africa. 
And he will give you a, a take on Mandela and Desmond Tutu that these people don't want you to have because they've used their resources mm -hmm. to make these people a certain way. They build up our leaders. We don't have leaders. We have misleaders because mm -hmm. their job is to mislead us. And why they build them up. That's why they build them up. That's why we got them all over in the hip hop. We got them all over. They so all when, over. When I see the system behind any black person, I'm suspicious of them. Because yeah. the reason why you won't hear about me because of the work, uh, despite all the work that I'm doing, is because I'm not part of their system. Mm -hmm. I'm not perpetuating the things that they espouse. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, man, you don't get them breaks and them deals unless you play ball or play with balls, pause, literally, yeah, <laughs> figuratively. For real. No, it, it, it's just some weird shit going on. And like I said, I'm about being a man. I'm about... I'm about raising warriors. I want to see more warriors, not gang members. More warriors. I want to see more warriors. And a warrior is going to be a protector of his community, not a predator in his co community, not a nuisance in his community. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Right. That's a warrior, man. We protect our community, and we respect each other. I don't walk around disrespecting black men for no reason, none whatsoever. You know what I mean? Like, yo... We gotta stop that. We gotta stop that. Uh, that 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 was that was one of my biggest disappointments. Uh, when I moved when I lived in California, I did, I did a lot of walking, and I made it my business. Say, look at our brother. Say, what's going on, black man? Say, what's going on, so? <laughs> and the and the level of coldness that I seen. Man, nigga won't even speak to each other. Well, they turned they turn, they, they turn their community into a prison yard, though. Nigga won't even speak. Hmm. Black men walk by each other. They turned the community wanted, into a and, prison and, yard. And, and, and the, coldest, the coldest thing. And don't even thing, want to go outside of it. The coldest thing about it, you can't even look another black man in the eye. It could cost you your life. Making eye contact with your other brother. Look, look, man. I've I, I watched these dudes, you know, the little bit I see of them. If you are in your 50s and you moving, doing the same thing you was doing in your 20s, yo, man, you just in the way, man. Yeah. You, you, you know, they used to say if you're not part of the problem, you um, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. They part of the problem. And no matter how many times they get on YouTube or documentaries and Talk mm. about this, and we trying to talk to the youth. And you part of the problem. You part of the problem, bro. You part you know, of the because problem. Because until you renounce that shit totally, yo, man. Again, it goes back to where's the crew that's gonna go out and see these little shooters and tell them, look. Yeah. Yo. You said something earlier though. Yo. How can you be a leader or something, but you can't stop it? You can't stop it. Yeah. Yo. Man, cut, cut, cut. Because they on the internet talking, but the work need to be they, done. They, work. They gonna tell you how much years they did in prison, how many times they got shot. Might tell you how many people they shot or killed. I don't know. You know, I ain't impressed by none of it. <laughs> All you out here doing is auditioning for a book deal or a movie deal because you want White Daddy to come write that check. Nigga, I don't, I don't chase checks. I cut checks. You understand what I'm saying? So when I'm watching these folks. I know what they doing. They trying to tell the world, look, I'm interesting. I spent 25 years in prison. I've been accused of killing 20 people. Uh, you know, man, I'm a legend in these streets. They just hoping some white producer be like, let's get him on the phone. Man, you said some BS shit, boy. I know it, so, 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 I know it man. Shit. To me, all they doing is twerking. That's it. Ooh. They just twerking. If you a motherfucking man, you get out here, you make your way, and you ain't out here auditioning for nobody. You know what I mean? Look, man, no, no, man. Sh no shots at Bobby Schmurda. He's a young dude, and he was young when this happened. But I did not like that scene of him dancing on the table for L.A. Reid and them. I don't like that type of shit. But he was a kid though, right? And he didn't have the he didn't have the right people around. Well, he was shooting guns, and he was oh, no, you man. know what I mean. I, I, me watching that him dance, me. me watching him dance on that table. I was like, yo, where was the? I couldn't have been around. I wouldn't let that happen. You but know? the question is, we got the youngsters being fascinated by what they bring to the table with the with the money, and when they do it, the the game is. 
separate yourself from him. Man, look, look. You the, you the knowledge. They try to make them separate themselves from you. Homie, I, I'm, I, I'm not talking about Bobby with this statement I'm about to say, or anybody in particular. But if you out here willing to do anything for money, you ain't no better than a whore. You just you a prostitute, man. Mm. If you if you willing, you know, if, if you willing to do anything for for a dollar, is there anything you won't do? Is there anything you won't do for a dollar? Yeah. That's the reason why right now the game related podcast we create our own that we ain't backed by nobody. Everything we doing, we doing it our goddamn I a, self. I had a five hundred one C three. I got it in two thousand and twelve. I never applied for no grants. Uh, I never asked for donations. Mm-hmm. Or oh, I had a Jewish lady uh, out of Baltimore. She was a, she was an attorney that, that worked in a lot of youth youth mm-hmm. justice. She she said, Charleston, your community is going to have to learn to be self sustainable. I met a guy by the name of Bart LeBeau. At the time, Bart LeBeau was the executive director of the Annie Casey Foundation, which mm-hmm. is a five hundred one c four that gives money uh, based out of Washington D.C. to the five hundred one c threes. He gave me this book that's called "The Revolution Will Not Be Funded," and it's written by the Jewish Council. <laughs> <laughs> it's written by the Jewish Council, and it breaks down the nonprofits. We think we're doing something with a nonprofit. When I got that book, I let my nonprofit go. I wanted to get. I wanted to go to my community and say, "Say y'all, we need help, and we help us." And, and, and I was and I was able to do that by showing my people that I can be self sustainable without asking for no donations. Yeah, with the with the foundation in Detroit, I funded it. We we've gotten money from people, but it started with me putting fifty to sixty thousand of my own money into it. To get it off the ground, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not two million like LeBron. But fifty to sixty thousand for me is like two million dollars. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, 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 so this is what she told me. The biggest problem. Yeah. She told me this is the problem that we have as African American people when we're asking other people for their money. Why would any corporate give you or any donor give you some money when you can't even work. get money from your own people. Yeah. Those are your constituents. You saying you're helping those people but they won't help you. Why would we give you our money? Hmm. That's why nonprofits don't get money. Yeah, look man, it's it's a tough, tough, tough road, bro. Everything is harder for us, but when you find a brother or sister who's doing something positive, I, I don't mean clout chasing with a million followers and all that. that I mean, that's not necessarily bad, but that's not how you measure uh-uh. positivity. Right. Uh, now, right. boots on the ground, yeah. grassroots. When, when you see that, you get you got to support them, man, any way you can. It may not be money. It could be you may find of a, you might find out an opportunity that they don't know about that they could benefit from. Like I just told the brothers today about the cybersecurity. Yeah, damn, so that's damn, something damn. y'all going to look into. You know damn what I mean? Sure you understand? It could be little stuff like that, man. We got to stop trying to be grandiose in everything because there's a collective narcissism in our community. It's always about, look at me. Yo, that's why I said unsung heroes, man. Thanks. I just want to see brothers do good. Facts. That's it. Facts. Yeah, I get people all the time. You don't show none of your community work. I'm an unsung hero. No, oh, man. Facts, man. And, and if you show too much, it'll be people trying to figure out how to stop you anyway. Yeah. So it's a double. Uh, you got to walk a well, tightrope. Well, you know well, what I mean? well, well, that's what happened, man. We had yeah. we had a wonderful program that was going off into the school. We had over 20 men, uh, from local celebrities to NFL players. And we showed too much, and they made it about politics. And, See what I'm Charles saying? White, so yeah. Showed yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah look, look, much. man. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that that I that I that I'm holding back, that I'm working on, man. But just know, no matter what you think about me, that when I wake up, this Kurt, this version of Curtis School, is always trying to do something to help the black community. Yeah. And I don't care if you're from New York, Dallas, Compton. It don't matter. I'm trying to help my people. Thanks. That's it. That's I help white folks too, but yeah. I, I look for my people first. The charity begins at home, Charleston. Yeah, yeah real <laughs> Look, look, look. Yeah. charity begins at home. So, yeah. and, I, and I think by helping our people, we're helping America yeah. and white people and everybody else because they don't have to deal with the, 
the, the liability. We doing it in house. And let me just say this, America, we're making better Americans all day. Focusing on us, we're making better Americans. better Americans because so much of our racial discourse centers around race. Race. And so really, how can we avoid it? How and, can we avoid and, it? And, and, and really, uh, it, it, it's the it's the personal ideologies that make racism bad. Man, I know some racist people. Ain't bad at all. They just don't want to be bothered with you. They just don't want to fuck with you. Look, look, man. I never really understood if they don't like black people in building number three, why the hell do I want to go move into building number three? <laughs> look, <laughs> I, that's the dad. You, you, you know what my dream, you're not, not dream, but what I would like to see, I would like to see black, white people wanting to move to black neighborhoods because it's safer and the quality of life is better there. I would like them wanting to send their white kids to black schools because the the, the, the environment is conducive to success. Mm. You see, it's the, we always chasing. Is that reverse racism? Look, it, we, we <laughs> always chasing, right? But what we got to do is put ourselves in a position mm. where we people want to be. Man, that's some game, us. man, that's some they, game. They, they got to, yo, until we make that happen, we, we just always chasing. I'm not the greyhound chasing that rabbit, man. You know, I ain't looking for the plug. I am the goddamn plug. And I mean that in the most positive way. Nah, we the socket, man. You the socket, man. That's what they could say. You the socket, man. Say, so with that being said, man, we going to end the show with that on such a positive note, man. Uh, black people should be creating spaces and environments and, and, and conditions, man, with people trying to come in and live next door to us. Boy, that's a hell of a concept. Man, real talk, man. I can see it. Boy, I love being on here with you, I brother. I see you, man. man. I appreciate you. Man, man. that way, man. Oh, uh, man, we out, man. man. Yeah, yeah, we out. What we doing tonight? You in? You, you, you at the host? I'm in, man. I, 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 <laughs> man. I appreciate it, though. I already, man.